In this lecture, we are going to work on admin profile. For example, as we log in as admin, when we click on this, you can see my profile. So we are going to work on this. So first of all, we need to go to the we need to go to the controller. So let me close all these files. Alright, so we'll go to half HTTP controller backend. We have admin controller, right? So after this, we also need to work with the route. So we'll go to route, wave route. So in this web route, we have the first item that is in our admin middleware. So we can copy this route. After we copy it, we can be able to paste it below this particular one. All right. So this route, the name of it should be admin profile. Then the method we are going to create, we can give it a name of profile. Then the name of the route is going to be admin profile. All right. So this is it. So next we are going to create a function this profile function so let's copy this we'll now go to the admin controller who can create the function like this public function this of round bracket close it then we hit enter to go down all right so now this is also going to be a view so we can just write return view so inside the view what we have to specify the view first so let's save this we also save this we can have an error here because we did not complete the code right so let's come back to the resource resources views so inside the views we have admin let's create another folder inside this admin we'll call this folder profile all right so let's call this folder profile so click on this profile so inside the profile we'll create another file we'll give this file a name of view view.blade.php enter all right so we have this so next thing to do is let's update this controller at uh, this method so the view will just put single quote then we have admin profile view all right so the first folder is this the first folder is admin this is admin folder then inside we have profile folder then we have view that is this particular one and we'll put semicolon at the end after doing this we can be able to save it all right so we don't have any error so now what we have to do next is inside this view we have to extend this our admin index right we have to extend this the admin all right so to extend it we just admin dashboard we just need to add at sign then extend then we now specify admin dashboard that is the dashboard we want to extend then inside this dashboard admin dashboard we also specify uh, we have to yield a content here so we just have to type at yield content this is okay so now here we have to save it then we now call a section section and end section all right so inside the section we are going to deal with content all right so that is the this same content we have here that is the content we just added yielding here all right so that is all so now as we did this we we'll go to the controller we have this so next thing to do is how can we be able to view this file in our admin dashboard that is when we click on this so we have to go to our web we created this route name which is admin profile so let's copy this admin profile 
as we copy the admin profile let's go to the let's go to the sections sidebar or header so this header we have our admin we have the profile link here so we have to go to the href of it this is the anchor tag so in this now we will now put double core uh, press then we have route of round bracket close it then we have admin profile that is the name of the route all right so let's save this all right so this is cool so you can just refresh this page so when we click on this now profile you can see it is displaying admin profile so let's try to click on it to open so we can see now we have admin profile so our route is open successfully so next thing to do is we need to add the component inside this white space we have to add the component for the profile update so to add the component i have already get a file for that this is it profile view component so i will add it up inside the download section that is below this lecture so before then let me open it in a text editor when i open it now i'm going to copy this component this is how you will use it we have the diff so you copy the whole leaf you are going to copy this whole leaf like this just copy it so when we copy this div we will now paste it inside the view so we have to paste it inside this section like this all right so as we do this now next thing to do is we have another file inside of that so before we go to that site let me go there and refresh so when we refresh it now you can see we have a form that's supposed to contain our admin information so do not forget inside this same file we have a javascript so this javascript it will help us to preview the image you can see we have image upload so it will help us to preview the image before we save it so let's copy this also we just copy it like this so we'll go back so we are not going to paste it in view.blaze.php we have to go to the dashboard that is our admin dashboard so below that is below the before body we'll now paste this all right so what it does is that it will help us to preview the image before we load it all right so let's go back we'll preview or we'll refresh this when we refresh it let's click on this it, we can now go and select image so let's say we want to use let's just get a, an image so let's say i want to use this image i'll click on open so you can see it shows an image for me right let me select you can select as many type of image maybe i'll select something like this this particular image load it so you can see we have the image exactly the way it's supposed to be all right so this is cool this is cool so now what we have to do here is that we have to in the next lecture we are going to display all the informations that is in this particular page all right this is something that we did earlier that is in this particular place so it's just very easy to do it is just very easy you can even include it right now so we can go to this dashboard what we did earlier you can remember when we do you can even go to the health section this is the health section here right you can see we have the user name you can just copy it directly out user name so we have to view here this is the name so you just paste it here out username then this person's role is what so you can say out user role all right so this would contain the role then also for the here you have to we can edit the name so let's save this we we'll refresh this 
so you can see we have admin user then admin then the name here if you want to edit it also so we can easily be able to do that so we have to display the name inside the text input first so here we can just put we have to specify we'll say name all right so the name is name then after that we'll now add value so the value will now face this all right so this is going to be user name so when we do this we we'll also do for the phone number so name is phone remember how we set it up in our database all right so this is the database inside the database we have phone and we have image right so now we have phone we have name we have email so now let's take this we have phone then we have the value of it is also going to be phone all right so let's put phone so though we don't have anything we don't have phone so we don't have phone detail the phone is currently empty we do not update it yet so we we'll just leave it the way it is right so here that's all we need all right so let's save this when we save it we'll go back to there we'll refresh the page you can see this is displaying our name right we don't have phone number that's why it is not displaying anything right so in the next lecture we are going to update the profile where the image is going to be displaying in this image section and also at the header we are going to do that all right so that is all for now see you in the next lecture in this video we are going to update this information that is name phone number and profile image all right so that is what we are going to update so to do this first of all we need to go to the we need to go to the controller all right so let's close all this all right so now we'll go to the controller but before we go to the controller let's try first of all to update the route right let's create a route for the update all right so as we create this route for the update what we need to do first is we need to give the route a name all right all right so after giving it a name then we'll also specify what type of route is that so to do that first of all let's copy this all right so i'll explain it after i copied it so this is not going to be get it's going to be a first route so we'll have to update this to first then here we'll say admin update admin update then we can say profile all right that's it then here we can say profile or update profile that's the name of the method that we are going to create so a date profile then inside since we are going to create it inside admin controller so we have to leave this admin controller the way it is now here we can say admin profile then update you can call it any name that you want all right so that is for this so next thing to do is we have to go to this controller and create this function with this name right so what we we'll do is let's go to the controller of http we have controllers then we have backend and admin so inside we we'll now do this so now say public function this so after we do this next hit enter all right so now we have this okay so now what we need to check there is there is difference between this function and this function this function is just returning a view right while this particular one we are going to perform some we are going to get a request from a form so you remember this for this page here which is admin profile so the view when we go to the view where is this resource it we have views we have 
admin profile then this views so you can see on this view we have a form that will be submitted so that is a request right so that is why here we have to update it so we'll just put request then we put request like this all right so this is cool so next thing to do is we have to check the names of the input so we have name we have phone then the image this is the file of load image so we have to give it a name also so now say name name we can give it a name of photo or we can just say image that's the name all right so let's save it so these three names we have to make sure that we do not forget the way we rename it because we are going to use it in the controller so let's now perform some validation to make sure that all the content of our file are there right so for we to do that we we'll just use this request this particular request here we will now say validate we we'll call a validate function in laravel right so validate so after this we now open round bracket so the items are much so we are going to list them in form of array so inside we will start with the first item that is name all right because here we have name you can see we have name we have phone number then we have image so we are all going to learn how to validate them so we will now put name so the this is how it is it's going to be required is needed then after that the maximum characters we can put max the max should be 100 character all right so that is for this then also we'll do the validation for email all right so the email is also going to be required is needed then after that we don't i don't think let's check it very well we have name we have phone number then we have image right so this should be phone all right so it's also required then this should be we can also put something like max that is the maximum so the max we have to put it inside this single code so we can also put 100 so after this we will now add the last one which is a little bit different from these other ones so this is image all right so this image to validate it that means for us to only take image we we'll do this so we we'll now specify and add image then after that we we'll now put maximum so the maximum value of it that is 2 mb so the 2 mb this is how you write it all right 0 48 so this specify that the image is 2 mb 2 megabyte all right so that is all about the validation so next we are now going to get the current user the current user we are going to get this particular user we are going to get him from the database all right so to get this user what we have to do is we can just create a variable user let's say is equals to odd this is how we can get current user so odd user all right then we'll now do this all right so that is this then we have if we are going to now what we need to do is we have to check to see if we have image in the form if we have image in the form right so we have to do some kind of work right so we already have image so we want to check if we have image in the form so if in the request has file all right so what type of file the name of the file we give it image all right so that is the name we specify here 
image all right so now if we have image then we'll often call it brace and close it then inside now what is going to happen is we are going to check the image if we have it or if we don't have it we can remove uh, we can just upload it if we already have it so we can remove the previous one and upload the new one so this is how the code goes so if file exist inside public folder inside public file uh fat user of image so now open calibrate and close it so now say file delete delete from public fat user i will explain this therefore it's going to be very easy for you to understand it all right so what we did here is that here we say that if file exists public fat so if there is file inside our database if there is file inside our database inside our image here if there is file so it should take the name of this particular file that we have here because we are going to send the url of that file it will take it and go to the url and delete it at there because we are trying to update all right so that is if there is and if there is no file so we will now continue so the public part when we talk about public part in part in, in laravel we are referring to this public folder here all right that is the public file this is where we can save most of our files that we need anytime in our project all right so now what we will do next is let's create an image variable then it's equals to request image so we are going to we create this an image variable which is going to contain any image that we uploaded from this image form that is from this particular place from this particular place any image that we uploaded so it's going to be stored inside this variable image all right so next we are going to do this we will now add another variable image name is equals to run that we are trying to create just run that is going to generate a random number then we we'll do this so we we'll do underscore this dot means concatenation is going to generate random number and concatenate the random number then we we'll now put this then we we'll now say image that is our image variable this particular image variable so this image variable then we can say get client original name get cry original name then we we'll now put this so it is going to get the image name all right and attach it is going to generate random numbers attach it with underscore and now put the real name of the image we are trying to upload for example here when we come i select an image let's say this image so it is going to get this name all right so that is this so after this now we will now say image that is our variable of image move we are going to move the image into our public folder public part so upload so we can call it upload we can call it any name right so let's go to public here we can call this we can create a folder we can say upload that's the name of the folder so inside this upload this is the name of the folder so now we are, that's where we are going to add our 
uploaded images so the name of the folder we have to specify it here so upload then we now put comma and we now add this image name so that is the file that's the, the name all right so when we upload it it is going to go with this name all right so that is this so next we have to do we say fat is equals to so we'll put this of load that's the name of our folder all right then we we'll now concatenate it we we'll say concatenate then the image name so that's going to be the all right so this and we we'll now put semicolon so this part now we have get the part that we are going to save into our database the fact of the image is going to be saved here so it's going to be very easy for us to get the image so next we will now say user that is the user the current user image in our own here we can see the name is what is uh image right so user image is equals to part all right so here i have to remove this all right so now what we did here is that we we'll move the image into our upload folder then we are also going to save the fat to this upload folder into our image column in the database that is in this database yes so this is very easy it's the best way to do so that's all so now let's go and save the remaining items so we use the user as well so user um the items are what name right so we have name username is equals to request username is equals to request name then also user phone that's the second item in the from the form here we have it here you can see phone right so user phone is equals to request phone all right so that is it so next we'll just say user we are now going to save the detail so user then save so this is going to save the information for us all right so now when we save the information it is good for us to receive some notifications of the saving right so let's save this also as well so now what we have to do is let's try to after we send the information let's try to do something like this um, let's return return redirect back so we are now going to come back to that page that is our view page right so we are going to return to that page after we uploaded the update all right so let's save this all right so before we test it out we have to go to the view we'll go to the form inside the form here we have to check the method so the method is post then after that action so the action is going to be the route what route do we specify that is admin profile update so since we are going to upload image so we have to put enc type so enc type is equals to be is going to be 
multifat. So make sure you put the ink type, this ink type, because you are going to upload image with use of this. After this, now we have to add the token. All right, so you remember the tokens we were using. This is very important. Let me show you. We used it in the auth. You can see login. So we have this CSRF token. So we'll come back to here, copy it from there, then we'll add it up at this place. All right. So now press Control plus S to save this. So that is all. So let's now refresh this page. Okay, so let's try to update information. So phone number 0701345678. Then we'll now select an image. I will select any image. Let me select this image. Alright, so I'll click on save. Alright, so now it says HTTP class backend odd not found all right in the controller all right so now let's check it out and see we use odd so we did not include it into controller so this is just very easy what we have to do anytime you come across this problem so you call off there you can see you don't have odd right so this is very easy what you have to do here is that let's hit enter say use all right so we use this eliminate then also put this slash then support slash again then you put packet slash then hot and i put this all right so save your work so let's go back to the let's try to refresh it say continue All right, so you can see we have file, so we also have to include file. So it's same process. So I am just leaving this therefore Whenever you come across issues like this, you know what to do. So you just copy this. They are also from the same directory, like this. So you can now change this to file. That's all. So now let's refresh it again. Yes, we are going to submit yeah so now we have submitted and you can see it redirected it redirected us back you can see it here right so this is cool when we check we refresh this you can see even the image is there right so this is very cool so now what we have to do is we have to all right so last thing to display we have to display the image at this place we also have to display the image at this point so let's quickly do that so we'll just go back to this here we can just copy this also so we can remove this so after the double quote here yeah. then we'll now say asset because we are referring to our upload folder that is this in the public this upload folder so we have to say asset so upper round bracket close it then paste this there here is the name of our database the name of our column here is image so we will also say image all right so press ctrl plus s to save it so now let's go back and refresh it yes we have our image here we also have to update it as the header so let's just copy this whole things from here so we have to go to the folder which is this this we have the admin then section at the header where we display the name so this is the image here all right so let's also paste it at here all right so let's paste it so control plus s to save this so let's refresh it yes we have it here Alright, so here we have come to the end of this. In the next lecture, we are going to update the user's profile as well. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to post notification whenever we updated this record. Alright, 
So you can see we update the record, but we cannot be able to know whether it is updated or not, unless when we get the return of the data. So we'll learn how to add notification. So there is a notification library. This is it here. This is the link to download it. So I'm going to add the link below this video. So when you open it, you can see GitHub Unest Toaster. So when you open this link, we have this composer require unit. So we have to we have to click on this to copy it, or you can copy it like this. So now go to the inside your project you can see htdocs the name of your folder then you now paste it inside so we hit on enter make sure you are connected to internet before doing this so this is going to download the file cache and add it off inside your project where you can use it so the packet is very easy to use so the moment it finish installing to add it up it is just very easy so let's wait for it to finish installing. All right. So now that the package has finished in, uh, installing, so how do we use it? So this is the this is a very simple implementation. All right. So let's go to the code. We have. Let's assume we. This is where we update the record. So we want a situation where the toaster should display immediately before redirecting. All right. So to do that, what we need to do is we just need to call the toast. So you can see we call the toast. Then here we now add success. That means the type of this uh, toasting is success. You can check it off from here. You can see we have many type of. We have for warning. We have for success. We have for error. Then we have also for success, right? With the timer, where you can be able to use the timer. All right. So if it is this, let's just copy this particular one. Copy this. We will now use it inside our project. So just paste it like this. So our own toaster. We want it to display that data has been updated so we can say profile profile has been updated successfully congrats all right so this is it so let's look on save to save this after we do that let's test it out and see how it looks like so we have this place let's refresh the page all right so we have to log in so we have to go user then we start with it with the admin the other time so admin then password so login all right so as we did this now we have to want to update this so let us know i want to change the phone number to something like this all right then i will now select another picture so let me use this particular picture. All right. So when I update it, the picture should be like this. So let's watch the toaster and see how it works. So click on save changes. Yes, you can see congrat profile has been updated successfully. And definitely the picture is showing and also the phone number is also displaying at this particular place. All right, so this is very cool. So this is how to use the toaster. See you in the next lecture. Do not forget to leave review for us. Thank you. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to change password. So when we click on this, you can see we have settings. So these settings, we have to change the text to change password. So let's do this. So this is in the section. Then we'll go to header. Then we can see we have settings so we now change it to change password all right so we now click on save to save it so let's refresh it again so we can see we have change password all right so this change password 
what we need to do next is we are going to add a link to it we have to create a link to it that is a route that is going to be working with it so first of all let's go and create a route so we have to go to this we have wave then this is where we do update profile so we can copy this whole route like this we can copy this whole route like this then this is going to be a fourth route all right so after we use this as the post route we can say admin update what update first word. then this is going to be update first word, not update profile and this is admin password update all right so that is all so next we will now create a function in the admin controller so let's go to the admin controller and create this function for the update password so come to controller backend admin so here we'll do this we have to say public public function then update password open round bracket inside the round bracket we are also going to treat it as a request because we are going to get request from form so this next we open curly brace we we'll close it all right so that is this so now we have created this so before we add more content to it let's go to a view let's create a view for that all right so to create the view we already do something similar so go to view admin you can see profile so we'll create another folder we'll call it first sort then here inside the profile you can see we have view profile so we can copy this whole things from here we'll copy it all and we'll now come back to the first word new file we can say view <coughs> dot blade dot php so we'll now paste this inside all right so now we have this particular items so now this is going to we are going to customize this all right we are going to customize this all right so before we customize it we we'll have to make sure that we can be able to view the file therefore we'll be customizing it so to view the file we have to create a route for that so this route is for update first word. then we we'll also create another route we'll call it view password or view password update so we can create it and place it somewhere at the top of this you can see admin update password update password then here we we'll also call it admin update password then admin update password then the other one we can say admin store password right you can call this admin store password and here also store password then here also admin password store all right you can call it any name all right so now let's go and create this function we already created update password function so what we need to do is we need to view password from there so this is just a view so what we have to do next is we we'll just say return redirect or we can just return view so the view we are going to return is admin password view all right this is the view we are going to return all right so that is all so now we have to preview it so we have to copy this route name we'll go to the 
header we have to go to the header this is the header this is our text of change password so we'll now change this to route then we we'll now place admin password update all right so this is it here. so let's check it out and see how it looks like so we'll refresh the page again we we'll go to this place we we'll click on change password yes so we have an error that we have to press all right so you can see the get method is not supported so on this what we have to do anytime you come across this type of error this is how you can easily fix it so you go to the web and you can see here since we are going to get a view so we have to use get like this then you save your work so the moment you save it you go back you can see admin update password is often so you remember we were using our the other page that is that belongs to the profile that is change profile so now we have to remove these items also remove the image then we'll now set the password update form properly so to do that we'll just come back to this where is the update password this is the view here so we first of all need to remove this div so let's save it therefore we will not be making mistake yeah so the title also we can change change check it to we will change it to change password or update password so let's pre refresh it yes update password so this is going to be current password this is current password this value we have to remove the value all right then this type of it is going to be password the id also we change it to password and the name is going to be password all right so let's save it we we'll have to be checking the changes we are making to make sure that we are not making mistake yes so this is cool now next we are going to do for the other input so that is this particular one so what we we'll do is i'll just copy this i will paste it on this particular one this is going to be new password all right so now we'll come back to this also for the images we we'll also paste it so this is going to be confirm password confirm password so let's refresh it again and see yes so next is we need to make sure that we did not make mistake in the inputs all right so to check this properly this input that is input password we have to for the current password we need to make it this way the type is password the name is also current password that's going to be the name so you make sure that you use it as current password so the name is current password all right this c is small letter so let me make sure you are using small letter for that so current password then for the new password is just password then the type also password then for the confirmation we have to type password then the id we are going to use confirm password or password confirmation you use underscore password confirmation then the name is also going to be password confirmation so do not make any mistake make sure you do it like this all right so that is all now next thing is we have admin profile update so this is not going to be the route so the route is going to be different from this so currently we are just trying to check the views all right 
so this is what we need actually all right so let's now preview it again and see how it looks like yes so this is going to contain our current password this is going to contain new password and this is going to be update uh confirm password all right so that is all so in now all right so that is this in the next lecture we are going to learn how to we can update and store the password see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to work with the update password that means after we add the current password we add the new password we add the confirm password so we can be able to update the password all right so to do this what we need to do first is we have to go to the controller all right so let's close all this therefore we'll open them later on so close all here also we minimize everything so here on this particular one we have to go to the route wave you can see this is the function we are going to use which is store password so i will click on it the function is there then this is the route name so i will copy this function i will now go to the http controller first ad admin controller so i will now create the function so say public function store password this is going to be a request all right so we'll now come down there and click on this all right so now this is the first step so the next step is we are now going to validate we are going to validate so for you to validate it we use request request validate so we are going to validate the input all right so the first one that we have to validate let's open the views and confirm it views admin password view so the first one is current password so copy this that's the first from this particular one we are going to validate it so current password so we'll go there we'll just put it in between this curly brace in between this uh double quotes a single code then we we'll now put this then we we'll now specify the rules so it's going to be required and after that is going to be current password all right it's going to be current password so this is it in laravel 10 when you say current password so that means the current password in the database all right then the la the last validation which is password that is this input here you can see the second input that is our call our new password so password then inside this password this is the rule it's also required we need it if person did not input it there is going to be an error then confirm so it need to confirm that is another rule then the next rule is minimum of it is eight characters all right so this is it so it's going to be the first word new password then it's going to be required it's going to confirm and it's going to be the minimum character is eight character so this confirm that means it is going to check this password confirmation to see if it is same as this new password so that is it all right so after this now let's go and add the request request user that is current user update that means to update so what is it going to update we are going to add it off now so inside this we are going to update password so we'll do this password big crypt we are going to use big crypt big crypt that is a way of encrypting the password 
which is inside this which is also a function within Laravel that is Laravel 10 so we say request request password all right so that means this password the one that we are going to use to update so it is going to be bcrypt it is going to be encrypted all right so that is this so after we do this next we have to display error so we are now going to display not error we are going to display confirmation so we can just copy this all things then we now paste it at this place and after that we will now say congrats password has been updated successfully so we change this to password has been updated successfully so we click on save all right so next thing is we have to take this route name and add it up inside the form that is for the password so this is going to be the route we are going to use all right then we don't need this ink type multi data we don't need it because we don't have anything like image all right so this is cool this is okay so now we can test it out and see all right so let's go we'll refresh this page first so our password is password then the new password we can put one two three four five six seven eight nine then we we'll also add one two three four five six seven eight nine for the confirmation so we now click on save changes yes you can see congrats password has been successfully updated all right all right so you can see it's updated successfully so let's assume we tried a wrong password we we'll also tried anything that we like we we'll just write it in the new and confirm password when we click on save changes so you can see it did not show us a lot that the password has been updated so that means something has happened so we need to do a situation where we can see the error so let's go and fix it so you can see if you remember we did this something like this in the login this is it here you go to resources views then we have out then login so the login we have this you remember this so let's copy this that is if there's any error so we'll go back to our view we we'll also add it up below the csrf token all right so we can just do this so now we are going to change the current password that means if person did not put the correct password so if error has current password then error has current password here that will display the error for us then if maybe the new password did not follow the criteria or did not uh, allies with the core or the password confirmation so we also need to fix that so if password has password then we'll do this right so let's press ctrl plus s to save it we'll now go and test it again let's refresh the first the page first so now if i type anything here which is different from our current password the password that we just updated then we'll now type something different here also so when i click on save yes you can see we say password is incorrect password field confirmation does not match so let's say now we put the correct password one two three four five six seven eight nine then we now put something different from this asdf and here we put something different also asdfg press save changes you can see this is the, the current password is correct but the password field confirmation does not match so when we put one two three four five six seven eight nine then we now the new password we put something like asdf the confirm password to also put asdf when we say save changes it still tells us that the password field must be at least eight characters because we already specified that at the validation we did validation we say it must be eight characters so now when we use same things one two three four five six seven eight nine 
then here we type our original password or before before we change it that is password here also we use password then we click on save changes oh we can see congrat password has been updated successfully all right so this is how you can update password all right so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to do same profile update we did in the admin to the user so this is a regular user we have to link we have to open the profile that is to change the password and to change the name and picture and many other things we also do for the logout we already have the logout we also do for the set industry to change the password all right so to do this what we need to do now is let's go to the code section so in the code section you can see we have to create first of all a route for that so let's go to the route web.php so in the route we have this that is we have these two uh we have these items the first one which is for the profile here so have to copy this we use it inside the user's group of routes so let's paste this so this is going to be user then profile and we can say user profile all right so let's go to the this is going to be very easy because we already did it the same information so we'll go to backend we have admin backend and we'll also have user backend so for the admin backend we implement this profile so what we need to do is this same profile function for the user so we'll do this come to this place so we now put public function then we'll open round bracket and close it then we we'll now we are going to create a view right we are going to check a view so when the profile is this function is going to return view for us so let's create the view so resources views inside the admin you can see we have profile then view dot blade dot php so likewise for the user we are also going to create a folder so we'll now say profile and inside this folder we'll create a file we'll say view dot blade dot php all right so this view dot blade dot php we are going to open this one for the admin so we'll copy everything from there so we'll now go to the user profile where this is user profile so we'll now paste it inside here all right so this is very cool so on what we have right now you can see when we save the work here we also save this work here now here we have to return the view so we can say return view then user profile view all right so make sure we put semicolon at the end all right so next is on the inside the user folder that is the user view we have section then we also have header so this header we are now going to link it off we have profile that is my profile so this is going to contain this so we have to put route then we now put profile all right so what we need to do now is let's just uh specify this accordingly all right so now what we have to do here is let's open the wave this is the wave here so the name of this is what is user profile right 
so we'll just copy it then we'll now come back to the heading we'll now use it like this all right so let's save this so we we'll also have to save this particular one so let's go back to the you refresh the page so here on click you can see user profile so let's click on this yes so you can see now we have the profile added right so this is user profile all right so it is showing us the name so now we can be able to build profile so when we click on this to load the image as we did earlier it is also loading the image for us all right so this is very cool this is very nice all right so now what we need to do next what we have to do next is we have to update the profile with the image therefore the image is going to be stored in the users table all right so see you in the next lecture all right so in this lecture we are going to update this user profile so this is also same process as we did for the admin so all we just need to do is let's go to the web.php that is the route so we have this route here this particular route that is admin update profile so this is the same route we are going to use we just need to update it so this is going to be user update profile then here is update profile inside the user controller all right so this is controller this controller is user controller likewise here is also user controller all right and this is also going to be user controller all right then here we have update profile inside the user controller and this is user profile update all right so now what we have to do is here we can see we have the update profile right the one that we do with the image so let's do this we can copy everything from here also since we already do this so we now come and paste it here all right so you can see we have name phone and image right the same way we have it at this place we have name phone and also image all right so now that is this then after we do this next thing to do is we have to take the route name that is user profile update we we'll go to the view we have to go to the user profile view so this is not going to be admin profile update it's going to be user profile update all right so this is very cool very easy all right so now we have to save this file as well all right so we can say user profile has been updated successfully all right so this is very cool so now this is just set let's try it out and see so we have to refresh the page first so we refresh the page next we are going to add a number let's say one two three four this is the phone number five six seven eight you can use any number then we now select picture so let me select this picture all right so we'll click on save changes all right so now on this particular one we also have some little thing to fix that is inside the user controller which is the auth so also paste the same error the other time so for we to fix it you remember we added these two files at the top we add this auth we also add the file so we we'll now copy this go to this place so also paste it all right then click on save to save this so let's go back so let, click on this to refresh let's submit it again yes you can see user profile has been updated successfully so this user has been updated successfully so we have everything that we need on this particular item so we have successfully update this user all right so do not forget to leave 
review very good review for this let's help us out thank you see you in the next lecture if you have any question you are free to drop your questions all right so see you in the next lecture all right so in this lecture we are now going to work with the change password so we need to make changes so you can see this profile when we click on it it is trying to it is offering uh admin profile so we need it to be uh we need it to be we need it to be user profile so to do this let's just go to the pages all right we have the resources view then we have this resource uh user and we have profile view so this view here we are going to use what we are going to use user dashboard that is this dashboard here so we have to say user dashboard all right so when we do this we now click on save to save it so let's refresh it we will definitely see some changes and we are going to work on the changes all right so you can see here we did not see the picture anymore right all right so to do this to work with the picture and get what buttons we need first of all we have to go back to the we have the section we have header right so inside the header we are going to display the image we have to display our image from the user so you can see we have to copy this let's copy this all right so this is the image we we'll just do this so we now do this asset then we'll open then we we'll now add this all right so here we are going to use image so let's save it so let's go and refresh it again all right so now currently we have to all right so i'm displaying the image here it's supposed to be this particular image we are coming to this where we are going to use logo for it so let's go to the code again all right so here this particular place i'll just cut this from here all right so now this is the profile image so this is where we are going to use the image like this save it then we we'll now go and refresh the page yes we have this so next when we click on this you can see profile so it's supposed to be user profile when we click on user profile yes we are at the user profile then we have this for setting so we have to change this also so for setting this is the setting link here so you can say password or change password you can just put password all right so it seems it is something that relates to the user so password then here we can now put link so you remember for the head of the admin here we use the password you can see this is the change password so we use admin password update so this time around we are going to use user password update so before we use the user password update we have to make sure that we set the route so come to this place this is the user route here yeah? so we have to we can copy this also we can copy this first it here we can say user password so user password user update password then here is update password then here is also user password update so let's copy this route name remember this is user controller so we are going to use router user controller so let's copy this so after we copy this we will now come to the header which is for the user then we we'll now do this we we'll specify the route we we'll paste everything inside all right so this is very cool so next thing to do is we will now take this update password we'll go to the user controller this is the user controller here so we will now build the update password 
So this is what to do with say public. function update first what all right so now we have to set the view that we need it to display for us all right so the view is there you can see in the admin we have password right so we have to also create a password folder in the user all right so we have to create a password folder so user we click on this password Then we we'll create a file inside. We we'll give it a name of view. Dot. Blade. Dot. PHP. All right. So what we we'll do to make things easier? We we'll just come to this place. We we'll copy everything from this. That is it. Now we we'll now come to this view. We we'll now paste it. All right. So remember, this is going to be user dashboard. All right so now that is it all right so we have now create uh, create the view so let's press cl click on save to save this so now we can preview these changes so let's refresh this page or we'll click on this password we we'll click on user update password you can see it is telling us that user update password does not exist so why we have this error is because when we come to the user controller when we come to the user controller this is users controller here so in the users controller we have update password so we have to return view all right so to it return view we just say return view so the view we are going to return is user password view so we now put semicolon at the end. Press Ctrl plus S to save it. So we now go and refresh the page. Yes, so you can see now we have user pass update password is now open for us. Alright, so this is how we can easily fix this. Alright, so this is where we are going to stop. In the next lecture, we will now implement the update password for the user. In this lecture, we are going to check and make sure that the update password is working properly for the user. So to do that, let's go to our code. We'll go to the web.php. So now the last route that we have to take, we can take this route like this. All right, so this is a post route. So this is going to be user store password this is user controller then we have this as user password store all right so that is this so now next thing to do is we have to copy we have to create this this function so we already have it in the user admin uh, in the admin controller so let's copy it from the admin controller we'll now come back to the user we'll now paste it here all right that is to password so all the input here we can say user password has been updated so everything that we did here is same things the input and everything are same on the on the user password update all right so now as we did this next thing to do is we have to copy this route we'll copy it so we we'll now go to the view user password view all right so the form this is the form here so we'll now update this to user password store all right so we'll now click on save to save it so that is all then here we also need to save this all right we take this current password from this view that is the current password then we also take the password from that same view which is password right so that is it and here we now decrypt the password that is to encrypt it so if everything went to it we now use toast success user password has been updated and it will say congrats.
all right so now let's test this out and see how it works so now let's go there we'll refresh the page first so our password for the user is password so let's just put something wrong and here we also put something wrong also put something wrong so let's try to save it so you can see password the password is incorrect password with confirmation does not match so let's put correct password all right so now we will now put one two three four five six seven eight nine here also one two three four five six seven eight nine let's try to make changes yes you can see congrats user password has been updated successfully all right so let's check change it back the current password now is one two three four five six seven eight nine new password we only restore our password that is password and here also password and we'll click on save yes you can see user password has been updated successfully all right so here we have come to the end of this lecture do not forget to leave review very nice review for this lecture thank you if you have any question you are free to ask the question in this lecture we are going to load all the users of this application so that means when we come to the database we have a users table so in the users table we can be able to allow admin to see all the users both the admin that is those with the role of admin and those with the role of user so from that we can be able to allow admin to update users status instead of ad, uh, user that person can be admin so let's start with the designing uh, here we have user we need to make it a drop down like this so for we to do that all we just need to do we have to go back to the code so in the code we'll go to the resources views then inside it we have admin and we have section and this is sidebar so in the sidebar we have to you can see we have only user here so let's just copy this whole code here we'll copy this we'll now paste it inside this place then we'll change this instead of product this is going to be users so you can say user management let's say user management we'll call it users it's just going to be very easy so now inside the user we have these two items so this is going to be all users here we can put something like all right so we already have this all right so that is cool so let's just remove this particular one so let's press control process to save it let's preview it so we can see on oh, click on the drop down we can see all users all right so that is for this the next item to do we have to deal with the process of patching the user so for we to do that we need to create a route so to create a route we have to go to route folder waves so inside the wave here you can see we have all our code we need to create we need to create a controller for that so to create a controller we already know how to do that we have to go to our project folder so inside the project folder we will now open it into command prompt so let me open the project folder all right this is loan so we we'll say cmd to open it in command prompt so as we open it in command prompt now we are going to create a controller for the users so php at some make controller inside back and folder slash we'll create another folder inside back and folder for all admin controllers so slash admin then slash users controller all right so just hit enter after this Yes, so the controller is created. So let's check it out and see. 
So we'll go back to the folder. This is app. This is control HTTP controllers backend. Then we can see new folder which is admin. Then here we have users controller inside. So this is very nice. So what we have to do is let's add this controller into web that is instead of web URL that is web route. So let's copy this whole code like this. We'll paste it below. Then after the back end, we'll put slash then admin. Then inside the admin, we have users controller. All right. So now we have this users controller. So when we do this, we have to utilize this users controller. So to do that, let's copy the controller name, which is users. So inside the admin, we have to go down. So below, we will now add that route. So it's going to be a view route. So it's going to it's supposed to be, it is supposed to be a get route. All right. So this is it here. The route is here. Then the method is get. So this is going to be admin. Then we'll call the controller all. That's the route all users. Then the the controller name is users controller. So we have to update it here. Then here we can call it all users. The name of the method all users. And here we can say admin all users that is the name of the route all right so that is cool so now after we do this let's go and create a function inside this users controller with the name of all users so we'll copy this this is users controller inside here we will now do this we'll say public public function all right so function here we have c so public function open round bracket and close it then hit go down so we are going to return view so we did not create the view yet so we are going to create the view yet so let, let's create the view we go to resource views then inside admin we are going to create a folder inside that admin view we'll call it users all right so anything that relates to users is going to be there so admin users so the first item we are going to create inside the users will say all users so all underscore users dot blade dot php so all users dot blade dot php so that is what we are going to create so now we can be able to link it up in our function so say return view of round bracket close it then the view is going to be admin inside admin folder then inside users folder then the name of the file is all users all right and we'll now click this all right so now we can be able to view all the users all right so as we did this now let's uh what we have done currently so now let's now make this button that is this particular button here when we click on this link it should show all the users page for us all right so to do that what we have to do first is we need to come to the web url here We'll copy this route name then we'll now come back to the sidebar so we'll come to the sidebar where there is the link all users all right so we we'll just remove this add open and close double quote then we have route open round bracket close and the route is admin all users so we'll now save this all right so when we do this we'll go back and refresh the page all right so when we refresh it then we can be able to test it out and see all right so click on this then click on all users so 
now we click on all users you can see add me users does not exist that is here in the web url you have to check this all right so that is a typo error this is where we have the problem let's go to web so in the web this is it here admin it's supposed to be admin all right so let's save it and we'll go back so you can see now all users is loaded but we don't have any content so that means we have to add content into this all users currently it's empty so first of all we need to extend this admin dashboard right so we will now do this extend admin dashboard all right so after we do that then we we'll now add a section so section the section should be close and open and close then we are going to put content so we'll save this we'll now go back we'll refresh it when we refresh it we can see our dashboard is loaded so next thing is we are going to add content into this dashboard so where we are going to add the content is going to be between this section so to add the content inside this section what we need to do is we are going to have I have a file this is the file i'm going to add it off for you to use it so the file is here this is it here so what we'll do i'll open it inside the bs code we'll open it in restricted mode all right so first of all i have a css so you can add css directly into your style so this css i'm going to explain why we add it there all right so here we can add the css at this place then after that we will now add the table so to add the table what we need to do is we'll come back to this particular place here we can see this whole div we'll minimize it and copy it all i'm going to add this file for you to download so now below the css we'll now add it like this all right so press ctrl plus s to save it so let's go back and check it out and see how it looks like yes so here we are able to see our table right users management so this is a default data default data you can see it from here we have the data here these are all default data that's just a sample data so later on we are going to load so on this view you can see when you switch it like this you can make the current user an admin so that's what we are going to implement so before we do that we are going to load all the users in this table all right so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to load the users from database we are going to load them off into our this into this particular page all right so for we to begin that all we need to do first is we have to go back to the code this code here the controller we are going to import users model all right so model this is it here we have half models so we are going to import this users model this is what used to communicate with the database and application so use app the model is inside our folder you can see up here right app then we have model so we have to specify first use app then models then user so the name of the the name of the model you can see it is user all right so we now put semicolon at the end all right so after you do that next is we have to come back to this point we are going to create a variable that will hold all the users that we page so we, are, we can call it user you can call it any name so we can say users let's say users is equals to user that is our user model the one that we just imported now and then let test so if you want to page all the record this is what you use user letters then we we'll now say get awful round bracket and close it and you now put semicolon at the end 
all right so after that we are going to compact this so this is it here initially you don't have this particular point this is how it was so just put comma then we put compact of a round bracket and close then we are going to compact users this same name so when we do this so you can now be able to view it in this page so that is it for this section so next we'll go back to the all users page so in the all users page at this point this is the header so now inside the t body that is the table body we have to now start creating something that will bring it out for us so for we to do that let's use for each loop we are going to use for each loop so at add for each so we'll call it users that is the name users as then user so we can say as we can say key then we do this and we'll say user all right so that is it so now inside this particular one here we need to cut it from here when we cut it out then we can now paste it below this particular one all right below this tr please open table row and this is the closing table row so below the closing table row we we'll paste it here all right so that is it so when we do this next thing to do here is we have to this serial number is not supposed to be one so we do something like this open curly brace like this close it then inside this curly brace we'll now say at key the key variable we created at the top then plus one so this will automatically set all the keys for us all right so let's say control plus s it will automatically set the serial number so let's say control plus s we save this let's go there and preview it so you can see we have three records already in our table one two three so likewise here one two three it's repeating this but we have to change this to our original information from the database all right so this is it so now here we are going to remove this also so this is going to be user that is this particular user here this user so we are going to use it here so user what the name of our field is name name all right so it's some small letter name all right so save it or oh, come back to this place you refresh it you can see all the names are going to be here all right then now we are going to do for the remaining items email user also user type also so let's go back to there so we can just make things easy we just come back to this place so the take on item in our table is name then email all right so in our database it's written name then email as well all right so this is name then we have email after email then the next item which is user type so in the database the way it is here is role you can see it's role so we are going to use role so name then here we also paste it then we'll now say role so this is cool you can see name email user type that is the role all right so now we'll click on save to save it so let's go there and preview this so refresh it again yeah we can see we have all our emails then we have the user type so we have only one admin all the other ones they are all users and you can see this record the last record which is number three here it appears to be the first record so this this code that is on in our function where we say user latest get so this is going to get it in descending order all right so that means the last item is going to be at the top and that's the best way to to bring records out all right therefore you can be able to see the latest records all right so now this is how we can easily load data from our information right this is the way you can be able to load it from the database 
all right so the next lecture in the next lecture we are going to change uh, we are going to change the status of any user to admin all right so let's stop at this moment in the next lecture we'll continue with that in this lecture we are going to do in such a way that the moment this page is loaded that is this particular page is loaded so if user is an admin this checkbox supposed to remain checked so to do that we have to go to our views that is all views here then here you can see it's inside a checkbox all right so inside this checkbox we have to do something like this we can open curly brace and close it that is two times now now open a round bracket and close it then we will now say user then the user the user table in the user table that is what we are dealing with role right so we have to say role so user role is equals to admin we are going to use a ternary operation all right so outside this we will now open uh, we will just uh, put question mark then if the user is admin so that checkbox should be checked all right then else we will now put some uh, column then we will now put this so when we do this we are now telling this checkbox that if the user the role is admin it should be checked otherwise it will remain unchecked so let's save this and refresh the page yes you can see this user as admin anytime that we load this for example anytime that we load this we load this particular page this is admin so it will be remain checked all right so this is it in this lecture we are going to implement the delete function so let's begin it we are going to close all this we will now minimize this as well so first thing to do we have to create we are going to create a route so let's go to the route we have wave so inside the route in the admin below this we are going to create a delete route so this delete route will create it like this So admin delete then we will now press inside a curly brace we will now add user so this is it so after this we will now give comma we are going to use users controller so we have to add the controller and also add the function that we are going to create so the name of the function we can say delete user so now we are going to give this route a name. So the name of the route is delete user. All right. So that is all. At the end, we we'll make sure that we put semicolon. So now this is how you can create the route. All right. So the next thing to do is we are going to add this function into our users controller all right we are going to add it so let's go to controller users controller is here so we will now create that function so this is public function then this is going to be we are going to specify 
we are going to specify parameters so we'll say user okay we use user all right so inside we are now going to open this calibre so we are going to use this user all right so now after we do this this user variable that we just created for the user we just copy it here then we we'll now call delete so we are going to delete this all right so that that is all so when we do this next thing to do is we are going to return and redirect to our page all right so you remember we are in this page right all right so we are going to return and redirect so we can use this admin controller that is our admin controller let's just copy this so we now paste it here so this success we can say user deleted successfully so user deleted successfully congrats then return and redirect back all right so that is for this particular one so now next thing to do after this is we are going to the button so we have to go to the view so where is the view we have to go to resources views then admin inside admin we have users then all users so we have a button this is the button here so in this button what we need to do is we have to make sure that we create a form all right we are going to create a form above this button so that is it here form then the action of this form we are going to add double curly brace like this then route we are going to call a route we are going to link it to a route this then the route we are going to link is the name of the route that we just created which is delete user you can see the route here delete user so you can just copy this all right so after that which user are we going to delete we now give comma so we now include this user here we can copy this user we'll add it up here like this then we now put id we have to delete it by id all right so that is all now this form is going to be the method of it is going to be post method all right so that is all about this what we need to do next is the closing bracket of this form we have to cut it from here we we'll place it below the bottom all right we we'll paste it at this place so that is this and after this this we always have to use csr token so csrf token is there all right so now after that we can also add method the method of this which we are going to use delete so you can just include delete like this all right so the last thing here to do is now we have to this button we have to put the type so we can say button type is going to be submit it's going to be a submit button all right so this is cool so make sure you save all the files also save this file as well all right so now let's test it out and see how the outcome is we have to refresh this first so we have to log in again it just happens like this because I recently opened it all right so put password so you just log in all right so now we have this okay so on having this now let's click on delete let's say we want to delete this user that is this particular user here so just click on delete yes you can see congrats user deleted successfully so this is how we can delete the user all right so that is all on this lecture we'll continue with the next lecture in this lecture we are going to add a confirmation prompt that means whenever a user want to delete the 
user when admin won't delete a user so it's supposed to show confirmation before it is deleted therefore the information is not going to be deleted by mistake so we can use uh, JavaScript to do that we can also use a package which is called sweet alert so let's open sweet alert you just go to Google type sweet alert type sweet alert 2 then click on this to open it so this is sweet alert this is the link all right so now how do we do it we can install it by this of npm we can also install it with this so you can right click on this open a new tab so this is it here we can copy this js we'll copy the url we'll add it up into our program so to use it in all over our program we can just go to admin folder then we have the index this is backend we'll come back to the views here so in the views we have this dashboard all right so in the dashboard we'll go to the top we'll include it inside this so this is what this is js so we have to increase uh, include it in form of script so we can say script then here we we'll indicate the source of the script then we'll add this off all right so that is for the script then we can also go back and copy the css this is the css here so you can copy it directly like this so we'll go back to there the css should be add the css here also all right so now you can just right click and click on format all right so that's it here let's just keep it to be in same line this also should be in the same line like this all right so now we have added this so next thing to do is we can now go to the bottom and modify the bottom a bit all right so before we go to the bottom let me show you when you come back to the sweet alert that is this particular place here you can see the usage of it so the usage this example you click on this first item we will now go and select for delete that means if item is going to we can use any of this when you click on try you can see this is the sample so we are going to use this particular one all right so to use it all we just need to do is we have to go back to this where is our views this is our button so this button we are going to add on click listener because that sweet alert is javascript so we we'll come back to after the type submit we we'll now put on click so the on click we can give the function name as confirm confirm delete all right so open round bracket then we we'll now open double uh we we'll add two open and close curly braces so we we'll now add this that is user id this particular user id here we'll just add it all right so after we add this user id that is all for this so next below this or we can go to our dashboard we'll now add script that is below this particular one so type script open and close script that means we want to add javascript so we'll now create a function so the function name is confirm delete that is the function we want to use in this place you can see so this is going to be the function name so the function name confirm delete we we'll paste it like this open round bracket close it we will now give it a parameter we we'll call it user id after that we we'll now open this and close it something like this all right so now next thing to do let's go back to the suite alert we we'll say we want to use this so let's copy this We'll copy it we we'll now come back and paste it inside this place so let's arrange it a bit all right so now you can see you want to uh, are you sure let's say we can change the message to confirm delete that's the title confirm delete all 
right so here we can see are you sure you want to delete this user we can ask a question here are you sure you want to delete this user we ask a question for confirmation all right so the icon of the this uh the icon is going to be a warning icon then after that we will now put, leave everything the way it is here you can say yes delete it we can leave it as this then if the operation went successful it will show deleted then your file has been deleted this is what is going to display for us all right so we now come to this point here so if result does is confirmed that means when we say yes delete so we have to now tell what is going to happen at this point here so what we need to do now is we have to give form an id that is this particular form we have to give it an id all right the form where we are submitting we have to give it an id so this is the form that we are we are going to use to submit all right all right so the id on this form it is going to be what is going to trigger the action so we we'll place the id inside here we can add this something like this now we'll specify the id so the id we can call it delete form this is the id all right so we'll now save this so we'll copy this id this is the id here so we'll now come back to the suite alert so inside this suite alert we are now going to add it up into the javascript so what we have to do is we we'll now say document dot get element by id so what id we will now paste the id that is delete form so after that we we'll now say plus plus user id that is this user id here so we'll say plus user id all right so after that we we'll now put dot submit all right then we'll do this all right so this is cool so after we do this then it will now display this message message for us all right so that is all we have to do so what we have to do now is let's give it a try so we'll go to the page let's refresh it we'll refresh this i have to make sure that all the codes are saved so when they are saved we can now come back and refresh so we want to delete this user so click on delete you can see it shows so you can see it just deleted the item without we clicking so let's confirm let's update it let's now make sure that we stop it from doing that we have to click on button before it remove it all right so to fix this error what we have to do is that uh we already have our list here so what we have to do is that first of all we'll go to the display that is the uh the the page that is displaying the record this form we have to remove it exactly from the this button we have to remove it from the form so we'll cut it from here let's put it above the form all right therefore when we click on it only the javascript can submit the information all right so now it is at the top so after that you can see here delete form so in front of the delete form id we are going to also specify the user id with the variable that means the page user id then here we have the action the action is here which is route delete user then user id after comma then the method is post so that is on this then next we'll go back to the dashboard the dashboard here the script let's call the script inside we'll cut it from here we'll call the javascript ins at the bottom of the page that is after this we'll just paste it at this place all right so no sorry this is i did not copy the javascript the javascript is there at the top all right this is javascript so ctrl x to cut it from here so we'll now go brown We'll go down and paste it below this particular one all right so let's save this then also we make sure that your code is exactly like this if result is confirmed 
So document or get element by ID delete that is for the delete form ID. This is the ID of the form. This is the ID delete form, right? So we are going to use it here also. You can see delete form, then user ID, then submit. All right. So that is all. So this script, I'm going to add it in a script file where you can just copy it and paste if you don't want to type it. So when we do this, so at the end, let's try it out and see. So I will refresh the page again. So this user, you can see when we remove the button from the form, when we remove this button, this button from inside the form, so we are able to see the design. That is, we have view user, then we have our delete user here. So let's try to delete this user as well. So I will just click on delete. So you can see this time around is not submitting automatically. Confirm delete. Are you sure you want to delete? When I say yes, nothing will happen. When I click on delete, I say yes. So you can see the file is deleted successfully. All right. So here we have come to the end of this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to implement the use of this view detail so that means when we click on this view detail it should now display the details of this particular user for us all right so to do that all we just need to do is we need to create a route so we are going to create a route this is our wave.php let me close everything all right so we we'll now come to the route we'll come to the wave.php so inside the web.php, we are going to create a route. So the route we are going to create is going to be a get route. All right. So now type route. Then it's a get route. Open round bracket, close it. Now we now open. They say we can say admin slash. We can use user slash then detail because we are going to get the user's detail then it's going to be there uh, we are going to get it by id so we we'll now put id all right so when we do this we we'll now come push comma at this place so we are going to utilize the user controller so let's copy this we'll paste it at this place so here is going to be user detail all right so after this, here we we'll now put the name of the route, offer round bracket, close it. So we we'll now call it user detail. Alright? So after that, we we'll now put semicolon at the end. So this is the first stage. The second stage is we are going to create a function. This function, we are going to create it inside the controller. So we we'll open the controller first. The controller is inside backend inside admin folder users here so this is it you have to copy this we'll come to the controller so in the controller we'll put public function open round bracket and close it then here we'll open curly brace and close it all right All right, so inside this, we are going to add a parameter that is ID parameter. All right, so here we are now going to create a variable. We'll call it user. Then it's equals to, we are going to use this user model. So we'll copy it from here. We'll paste it at this place. Then we'll do this. Then we'll now say find or fail offer round bracket and close it so we are going to find this id here all right so we now put it at this point so next we now put semicolon then enter next we are going to return a view so the view we are going to return we did not even create the view so let's go to the views we have uh, route uh, resources view then admin inside admin we have user folder so let's create the view from here. So we can call it detail. Detail.blade.php. All right. So now this detail.blade.php, that's what we are going to call at this place. So say return view. 
then inside we have admin dash users then detail all right so we now give comma after that we'll confact it open round bracket close it then we are going to convert a user all right then we'll put semicolon at the end so this is all about this particular one so next thing to do we are going to design this view that is the detail so we have the detail here first we have to extend the admin so we'll say at extent admin dashboard all right so after this we'll now go down we'll now add section so add section with end and close so the section is going to be content like this all right as we did earlier so that is what we want to do so now we can save this file all right so we are done with this stage okay so the next thing to do is we are now going to link this this route to the button that is this particular button so this particular button is in the users uh, all users file this all users so you can see it here right this is the button which says view detail so this button we can just change the link to anchor tag so a href then here we will now change this also to anchor tag so when we save it nothing will change all right nothing will change you can see it it is now an anchor tag so what we have to do is we are now going to inside this we open round bracket uh calibrate open and close two times after that we are now going to call the route so the route we are going to call is users detail that is this route that we created this route so let's just copy this route exactly the way it is so we we'll now come to this place here we we'll put single quote then paste the route then after that after the route we we'll give comma then we we'll now add user then we can say id all right so now we save this okay so now when we do this let's check out and see what we did let's refresh this so we we'll now click on view let's start with the user here we we'll click on view yeah it opens this this is admin user detail the id of this user is 10 so let's now we don't see anything here so as usual there is a file that we are going to use this is users detail i'm going to attach it to this uh lecture so i'm going to open this file in vs code So the file is open. I'm going to take away this div. So I'll copy everything from here. I'll come back to the detail and I'll paste it at this place. All right. So after we do this, we'll now go back to the page and refresh it. We definitely need to see something around here. All right so what we have to do is we have to comment this first so the button this is the button with the div so let's comment it out so we we'll do this we we'll now say comment so now it's commented out so we can only see these details so now we are going to bring all the details of that user into these placeholders so to do that here we are going to call this so we we'll just do something like this open curly brace close them then we'll say this user name so let's save this we'll now refresh this yes you can see we have the user's name then we we'll let's also add the image so remove everything from here so we we'll do this the image is inside asset folder then inside the asset folder we are now going to call our user variable then we are now going to say image and let's save this also let's preview it and see yeah we have the image here then after this 
we, are, we can just copy this exactly the way it is. We'll now add it up here. Then we'll say what role. All right. Then here we can save this also. Let's preview it. We are doing this, therefore, we can have all the records. You can see this is a user. So next, we have the other user's record. In the database, when we check it, you can see we have phone number, email, then status. So let's refresh this. You can see we have status, role, email, and phone number. So remain these three items. So these three items, what we need to do is we are going to, we have the user's detail here. So below this user's detail, we will now remove this. So here we are going to use, just copy everything from here. So we'll paste it at this place. So here we will now um, add email like this. So here it should be, let's use H4. Here also we use H4. Oh, yeah, H4 is okay. So this place now will call the user's email. So we'll do this. User email. So let's refresh this again. Yeah, we have the user email here. So we can copy this and paste it into many times. So copy this. Paste. So this should be user phone. Then user status. Alright. So now let's refresh this. Yeah, we have the user's detail at this place. Alright. So this user's detail, let's just put it inside um, underline. So underline it. We can now copy this and paste it inside. Cut it from here then paste it inside let's save this then we'll now refresh everything yeah so we have the user's detail this are the user's detail then here the this thing is inactive this inactive we can also um we can use on the line we can be able to separate it because it's very important we are going to use it in the future all right so something like this then click on this all right so now when we refresh it you can see we are able to see the user's detail. If we go back to user, all users, we we'll come back to this admin, we we'll click on it. We can also be able to see the admin detail. All right. So this is how we can page the records and view it for a particular user. In the next bit, uh, lecture, we are going to work on this switch. The moment we switch, we can be able to make user to be an admin also see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to work on this toggle all right the moment we toggle is supposed to update the user to admin all right so to do that the first thing to do is we need to create a route so we're going to the route so this is where we are going to create the route So we start with this as usual route. Then the type of this route is going to be first route because we are going to post information into the database. So after that, we'll put round bracket and close it. We'll put this. Then here we will now put admin. Then slash. We can say user. Then slash. We are going to also use ID. That is for that particular user. After that, we we'll now put this. Then we can let's say call it toggle role. All right, we are going to toggle the role. All right. So when we do this, next we we'll just put comma. After we put comma, we can just copy this exactly the way it is and paste it because we are using same controller. So the name of this is going to be toggle. You can keep it any name as usual. So it's going to be toggle role. All right. So after we do this, next thing to do is we are going to give this a name as usual. All right. So the name we can use something like 
user dot toggle role so after this we now put semicolon at the end so now we have created the route so let's save this we now copy this we are going to create a function for it inside the controller so let's come down here we now put public function toggle role all right so as we are creating the function this is how the function is going to look like request is also going to be request because it's coming from form then after that we give comma the request also come with id all right so that is all so when we do this next we we'll just open curly brace and close the curly brace so we are going to create a user variable is equals to this is also going to be fine or fail so you can just copy this exactly the way it is i already explained this to you then paste it here then you go down oh go down now next we are going to say user user role remember we have role and that is what we want to change in the database here you can see we have the role so we want to change the role all right so we'll do like that so user role then we are going to say is equals to offer round bracket and close it then we can say request has then request has what request has role so we check to see the request has role that means we are now trying to refer to the details this is the all users detail so the toggle is here you can see the checkbox here right so we need to give it a name so we we'll now say name is equals to role all right so we have to this so when we do this now we can be able to use it properly at this point all right so request have name after we do this so next we have to go front here so does it have name we we'll open this is a ternary operation so we now put admin after this we now give column then we now put another role which is user then after that we now put semicolon at the end all right so when we do this next we have to just do user dot save and we'll open round bracket and close this all right so that is all about this so we don't have much problem here so we can just save this thing that we just did so the next thing is we have to go to the but before you can see here we have a simple error that we need to fix we say user role is equals to the request has we need to put has here all right so request has what request has use a uh, role so after this we now open uh, open uh, this question mark then admin then we have user at the end all right all right so you just press control plus s it will uh, save everything and you don't have any error so after we do this next we have to return and redirect but before we return and redirect let's just uh, let's just display toast telling us that user updated so we can say user role updated successfully congrats all right so after this we can say return and redirect right return and redirect back so we just put it down here all right so i already explained this to you then you now save this okay so that is all about this all right so now the last thing to do we have to go to the all users so this is where the work is this is where we are going to update the remaining things okay so to update everything here here we need to add a form all right so the action of the form is going to be we have to open curly brace open and close 
then the route open round bracket also and close this then here we will now say user the name of the route that is for the toggle so you can see user toggle role that is the name of the route then before we go out here we will now specify and say what user id so it's going to be user id all right then after we do this we should not forget that we have to add the method of the uh form which is first method all right so that is all about this next we'll copy this closing tag of the form we'll cut it from here we'll now place it below this level here all right so let's just give this a tab this is well arranged okay so now after we do this next thing to do is we already have this right so we have all right so we should not forget that this place we need to add the cr uh, csr f token so we just put csrf all right so now save this all right so now um on doing this next thing to do is in this input we will now that is the input we are now going to add on change so we can say on change so the on change is going to be this dot that will now put form like this then dot submit all right then you now open this open round bracket and close it so this will submit the form all right so let's save this so after you save it now let's go and try it out and see so we can just um, go back to this this is the page let's refresh it so as we refresh it we are going to try on this that is for the admin so we'll just click on it you can see our page is rolling you can see congrat role updated successfully you can you, have, you can see it automatically changes to admin so when we come to this place also we refresh it you can see this user is also an admin all right so this is how we can easily change the role all right so that is cool so when we preview this now you can see the the role is also an admin all right so that is very cool all right so see you in the next lecture in the previous lecture what we did is we were able to change the role of the user from user to admin so you remember when we toggle back it will automatically change the user role to user if we toggle again it will automatically update the user to admin all right so now let's toggle again to change it back to user so let's click on view to view this so what we need to now change is you can see um this should not be email we have to adjust it so i know maybe by now you have you would have adjusted from your section there so here is going to be phone then this particular place is going to be status all right that is either active or inactive so let's save this so you now come to this place let's refresh it very nice so here you can see the status is inactive so what we have to do now is we are going to work on it where since we have two options either active or inactive so it should now just same way we have it for the user we have user either user or admin so here we also have active or inactive so we can easily activate this user from this user profile so to do that let's just come to this point here you can see user uh, user user detail page so this users detail page we have to work here so this is all user we can be able to utilize the use of the toggle also to make things easier for us you can see this the toggle so you can be able to make use of it also so to use it this is all user so in the all user what we can do here is we have the we have this toggle that's for this so we can just copy this completely that is this form let's just copy it for the toggle so come back to this place you can see where this div is right so you just cut this div here also remove the comment then let's remove this so after we remove it 
inside now we can be able to paste the form all right so as we paste the form you also come back to this all users this is for toggle that is the css for toggle so you can also copy this whole css from here come to details here and you now also paste it at this point then let's save it so let's go back and click on this view user yeah you can be able to see you can see we have the toggle but we are not going to use it now we have to add some little details so and it in this place where we paste it inside this div let's create let's add a bolt then we can say activate or we can say yeah change status change status so let's save this then we'll now refresh the page like this yeah you can see change status so now to change the status we need to modify everything from here so here we have to also same process we follow the other time you can see this place here let's just copy this all route because they also look almost exactly same so we just need to change admin user toggle status we can say toggle status all right then here is also going to be toggle status all right then this is also going to be user toggle status all right so now let's save this so next thing is we have to come back to the controller this whole things so we can just copy it exactly like this this is very easy and save it here so next we can now the name of our function is toggle status so let's copy toggle status from here then we'll now paste it at this place all right so when we do this next we're also going this is okay we don't need to remove everything then user status the name of our table the name of our column is status you can see it here status all right so this status that's what we are going to use also so we come to this place user status status all right then here the name when we come to the details here the name here is also going to be status yes status so you can copy this that's what we are going to change at this point here so user has status that is the request then the two items are user can be active so if user is active change it to inactive inactive these are the two items we have inside this you can see we have active then we also have inactive all right so that is it either active or inactive then here we can say the toast here shows that user status updated successfully all right so that is cool so now let's come back to the detail here you can see it's supposed to be we are going to use this function uh this route name toggle status so let's copy this the details is here so where is toggle status we have to change it to this place toggle status all right then user id then is post also then the name is status also then here you can see we have we either have two things either it should be active or inactive all right so if it is active then or inactive all right so this is supposed to be like this if it is active so here is so be user status like this all right so if user status is active then the 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 this place that is the check this toggle should be by this item by this side here all right so that is all so now that is cool so let's save everything then we'll now go back and refresh this so you can see this is inactive let assume i go back and open the users if i open the view of this admin you can see this is what this is active now because it's admin all right 
So uh, because the status is active, so that is why it is also active here. You can see, right? So if I go back, I now click on this. I open the user. You can see it's act inactive. That's why this is like this. So if I click on this to activate it, you can see user status updated. Here is now active. Then this is also active. So when we go back to users all, we can be able to see them like this. You can see, right? So this is how we can change the user status that is from inactive to active all right you can see it here the moment i go back i click on this change it back to this you can see it says user status updated then this is back to inactive and when we come back to the database it's also going to be back to inactive very nice so now this is how cool it is see you in the next lecture do not forget to leave a very nice reply, a very nice review to this video. In this lecture, we are going to work on the loan type management. All right, so that is the different type of loan. So to do that, all we just need to do first is we need to change this design. So first, we have to go to the sidebar. Let's close all this. We we'll close everything. Then here we also minimize everything. So we have to go to resource, then views, then we have admin, then we have section, then we have sidebar. So in the sidebar, we have this first one that we just worked on. That is the user. You can see, so we can say user management, users management. So let's save this. Then you can preview it here and see how it looks like yes users management so we are now going to work with the loan money a uh, loan type management all right so here we have to change it to loan type management loan type management so let's save it all right so loan type management so what we have to do here is we we'll now work with the first one let's just uh make this let's comment this particular one so here we'll now say view loan view loan type so we we'll now save it after we save you can preview it and see the changes we made you can see view loan type all right so loan type we can use it to be loan types so control plus s to save this now we'll refresh it again all right so view loan types okay so now we have to create view therefore the moment we click on this is now going to show the loan uh, types for us all right so what we have to do is let's go in this folder which is the admin folder we already have users so create another folder we'll call this folder loan underscore type all right hit enter so inside we will now create another pile this pile we can say all so all type dot blade dot php all right so we can say all type or all loan type all right so all loan type all right, so this is the name here, all loan type .php. Okay, so now we have this view. So next to what thing to our uh, next thing to do here is um, the moment we run this, it should display the all loan type. So we have to add the we have to extend the admin dashboard, and after that we we'll now add the section as usual. So session, we open and close the section. So inside the session, we are going to work with content. All right. So that is cool. So let's save this. So as we save this now, what we need to do next is we need to go and create a route for it. So we already know what type of route we are going to create, which is a get route. So let's go and create the route in the route uh, web.php. So let's double click on this to open it. So this is for admin. So for this admin, we will now create a route. So 
we can come we can just since we just want to build all the route so let's just copy this particular one here i guess you know what i'm doing all right so i know you know what i'm doing because we have been doing this so we paste it so we can say admin all loan all loan then slash types so admin all loan types all right then here we can say all loan type all right so all loan types and here we can say admin all loan then dot types so admin all loan types we can add s here also so now this is the name of our this is the name of the route so here we are not going to use users controller so we need to create a controller for this to create to create the controller we already know how to do let's go to our folder that is the loan folder this is it here we we'll open command from term here so we'll now create it php artisan serve not serve actually make controller so the name uh, the controller we are going to create it inside backend folder then slash so the we have inside the backend folder when we check it here you can see we have we have this app http controller backend admin right so all the, the controller that relate to admin so we are going to add it inside so we have to go back here so this is it here slash admin then the name of the controller is going to be loan type loan types controller like this then we hit enter so now it created the loan type controller this is it here this is the loan type controller so before we close we also need to create a model so that will work with the loan type so say php artisan make model so call the model loan types dash m in front then hit enter all right so now we have the model which is this and it also created the migration table for us all right so this is the folder that is the model we have loan type this is it here all right so we also have users uh, folder the other time you can remember all right so now what we need to do next what we need to do here is inside this loan we have to add this we we'll say protected then we call this variable protected guarded is equals to this so this will allow the content to go safely into our database i already explained this the other time so let's save this now we are done with this model all right so here we're also done with this users all right so now the final thing to do is we have to migrate the database so the table so this is migrations the last item which is loan type we are going to get the table id so we have to add another item which is which is the is going to be of a type of string then inside we will now call it name right that is the name of the loan type so let's let's click on save to save this so we are done with this last thing to do on this is we'll come back to this place we'll now type php artisan migrate and hit enter is going to migrate the table for us so to confirm that we'll just come back to this place you can see the database here this is the database loan so you can see loan type when we click on it now we are able to see the columns which is we have name then we have the id so that is all we need on this particular thing all right so lastly now we can be able to link this uh this link that is this particular link we can be able to link it and open the all loan types for us that is this all loan type 
view that is this blade file all right so now for we to do that here we have to include this controller inside the web view so we'll come back to this place we can just copy this all right then hit enter to paste it then the name here is loan you can see loan types controller this is the name loan types controller so this controller is the controller we are going to use so we'll come back to this that we just created that is for the loan type we we'll just paste it here save it and we'll all the loan types we have to create function for this inside the loan type controller so here we are going to create a function for that so we'll say public function all loan type open round bracket and close it so this is just for view so we can say return view so the view is going to be admin all right admin loan type then all loan types then we now put semicolon at the end this is very cool that's the only things we need all right for now so now we can be able to link it up so we can copy this name of the route then we will now go to our sidebar this href that is for the anchor tag will now include the route at there so we can say route of round bracket close it then all loan type this is it here. so we now press control plus s to save this so next we can now refresh this page as we refresh it we will now click on loan then all loan types yes you can see it opens the loan types for us but we don't have anything so as usual i have a file that i will leave it for you to download this is register loan type if i open it in vs code all right we'll click on open in restricted mode okay so i'll copy this div completely this particular div here i'll copy it all right everything inside the body section we have copied it so next we'll now go to the view all loan type between the section so we'll now paste it so press ctrl plus s to save this when we come back to this place when we refresh it yes we can see we have the demo data all right this will we can be able to su submit the name of the loan then here we can be able to view all the names that we registered all right so that is cool all right that is cool so we are going to stop on this in the next lecture we'll continue from where we stop lecture we are going to post data that is the loan type into the database all right so we already created the table in the other video so here our table is empty so we are now going to make use of this form to send data into this table that is to create the loan type all right so to do that what we need to do we have to go and create a route so we have to go to route then wave then inside this we already have the controller created so next thing to do is we are now going to save the information into the into the database so let's just copy this complete route we'll now modify it so this should be first because we are going to post information into the database then admin then we can say admin add loan type all right so admin add loan type here we can just put underscore all right so admin add loan type so this is the route all right so now this route here we have to create a portion so we can say add loan type so something like this add loan type all right and here we also say admin add loan type all right so this is the route name so now we have to go to the controller and add create a function with this name so as usual have http then we'll go to controllers then we'll come to backend 
with an admin a loan type controller so here we are going to create that so what we need to do here is that we have to come to this place we make sure we copy this name therefore we can be able to use it and create the function so the function we are going to create at this place is also going to be public function as we did earlier so we we'll say public function this then this is going to collect information from form so we have to say request then variable request all right so after we do this we hit enter then open curly brace and close it so now we are good to go all right so what we need to do first here is that let us validate the input all right so let's open the file this is resources views then we have admin then loan type then all loan type all right so here we have the form so the form is here which is input type text loan uh, id loan type then the name also loan type all right so this is it so what we need to do here is that in this we are going to validate this input all right so we we'll use validate variable so validate something like this validate data we can call it validate data is equals to request that is our variable of request all right so request then we'll say validate all right then open round bracket close then open a uh, square bracket and close it and at the end we'll now put semicolon so here we are now going to put the name so we are going to validate the name of the input we are going to use which is loan type this is it here we can copy it from here we will now make use of it at this place all right so that is cool all right so now next thing to do we are going to put this down we will now say this is going to be required so that means it is needed all right I will now put semicolon at the end. I will now put comma at the end. So that is all about this. Let's save it. That is control process to save this. So after doing this, next thing to do is we need to add our model. We need to add the model. So this is the model. We need to add this loan type model. So we'll come to this place. We'll say use half like this. Then models then the name of the model is loan types all right that is the name of the model and don't put semicolon at the end so this is the model that we are going to use all right so now this name of the model we have to just copy this name like this and we we'll now come down here so after the validation we can create a variable we can call it loan all right we can call it loan type so it's equals to new this file all right so now we have this so next thing to do is we will now see this loan type so this loan type then we have name so loan type dot name uh, name is equals to so we have to validate the data so we can call this variable that is validate this variable like this so validate data what data are we going to validate we are going to validate name all right so not name actually we are going to validate loan type like this all right so after we do this we don't put semicolon so after doing this the last item that we have to do is we have to say after doing this the last item we are going to do we have to put this then loan type that is our variable then we we'll now save it like this all right then you put semicolon at the end so now after we do this next thing to do is we can if you remember we use this same for example in the user here we can just copy this 
all right come back to this after this i will paste it here so return redirect back that means it will return and direct back to this page after we save the information then uh, the toast it will say loan type loan type registered registered successfully then we'll save this information all right so that is it so now what we need to do we have to check this we definitely know that we are dealing with form so we have to specify the method we are using so the method is post method and after that action so the action is going to be route then what the route are we going to use we are going to use this particular route here this is the route admin add loan type all right so come to this place and paste this route all right so that is all click on save to save this so that is all all right so after this this we have to add csrf token so csrf all right and we'll click on save so now we have to make sure we have some this input type is submit all right so i think we are good to go let's try it out and see how the outcome is going to be so here we can refresh the page so the loan type uh what type of loan are we going to create okay so now what we we'll do is the type of the loan that we are going to create that's what all right so we can add the first one we can add something like personal loan so personal loan all right so we click on submit all right so now we have submitted this data so let's check this out all right so now we have submitted one let's try to refresh this yes we have the first record this record here so let's add another one so after personal loan we can have something like home loan so we click on submit also yeah we can see loan register successfully all right so now let's try to this information here they are all not um this information they are static information all right so in the next lecture we are going to page the records from this database and display them the original record into this all right so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to page the loan types that is this loan types into this table all right therefore we are not going to be using this static data so to do that what we need to do is let's come um, we are going to the controller so before we go to the controller let's create a route as usual so we got this all right so as we did this what we need to do next is um we already have this okay let's go to the controller this is going to be the easiest way all right so controller we have backend and admin and loan types so here we are going to use this we'll create a variable can say loan loan type is equals to so we we'll now use this like this so we we'll do this loan type then we can say latest so this will get the latest loan type all right latest get and we'll put semicolon at the end so now we are going to get all the loan from the database next we we'll now come to this place like this we we'll copy this we are going to compact it so here we we'll now put comma then we we'll type something like this compact open round bracket close it then we we'll compact this loan type all right and let's save this so as we save this next thing to do we have to go to the view so view now we have admin loan type then all loans okay so here this is the heading then this is the body all right this is the body 
so what we need to do here is that we have two records we just need to remove this record like this so we are going to deal with these two records all right so to deal with these two records here we are going to use call for each all right so we are going to use for each so we we'll put this for each so we have to put the loan type so for each loan type all right as we can say as key then we'll do this then we'll now say loan type or we can just say lt that is for loan type all right so when we do this at this particular point here we are going to use double uh double curly brace so we'll now use this key we are going to be adding all right from this and we'll pay plus one so let's save this this uh, end of the for each should come after this tr after this table row all right so let's save this so let's now this should be inside a bit okay so let's press ctrl press s to save this so we'll come back to this place let's try to refresh the page yeah you can see we have one and two from the database so next we are now going to add the real loan types so this is just the name so what we need to do here is that we just remove this now use open curly brace and close it after we do this then we we'll now use loan type like this then we'll say name all right that's the name of the loan type so on doing this next thing to do let's try to refresh the page all right so now you can see we don't have this name is it so we have to check the database we have the loan type name all right so let's go back to this place here property name does not exist in the collection so let's check it properly loan type name all right so this is where we made the mistake here we're supposed to use the lt all right we have to use lt so not loan type we're going to use lt all right that is the alias so let's press control plus s to save this so you can see we have the loan type that is loan type here so now here we have the uh personal loan so now let us we want to add many loan let's say auto auto loan on press on submit you can see it is automatically added here and it also shows us an alert so let's add another one something like business so business loan so you click on submit so you can see we also have business loan here all right so this is very easy all right so now we are able to paste the record from the database all right so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to delete loan type all right so to do that all we just need to do we have to go to the route and create a delete route so this is it here you will remember with these same things for the user so we can just copy this particular thing just copy it then we will now come to this place and paste it so delete we can say admin delete then space then we can put a uh, loan type all right so here we we'll just use loan type we can just type loan type all right so here we can the name of the function is going to be delete loan type then here is also delete loan type this same loan type delete loan type like this all right so that's the name of the route so here is going to be loan controller that's cool so now let's open this controller that is our user controller i'm just doing this because we already did it back so you don't have problem with this so back in then we'll go to users controller also open the loan controller so the users controller we used this function that is uh delete 
but the delete will use this all right so we click on it like this so as we click on it now we'll come back to this place now we paste it that is the function for the delete all right so instead of delete user the name of our function here is delete loan type so we'll copy this loan type like this we'll paste it at this place all right so here we are going to use loan type here it's going to be loan type then here we can now use a variable this some variable can just call it loan type something like this this is very easy i think we did it earlier so we can copy this variable we will now use it here all right so loan type then we'll now say delete like this all right so that is cool so here is going to tell us that loan type loan type is deleted successfully all right so that is this then it will return, return and redirect back so we are done with this section then we have to also go to the view and also make some changes so in the view when we can take an example of what we did for the user we have all users here so for the delete what we did there is that we use a form all right so we can copy this form completely the way it is then we'll come back to loan type all loan types like this we have the button for the delete this is the last one the red one this is it here all right so below it we can now paste the form so the form the route of the delete is swave then we'll come and copy this route here that is this route we'll copy it exactly the way it is then we'll come back to this particular place here the route we have to update it to this all right so update it like this then here it is supposed to be lt id all right so that is lt id that is the loan type id here is also loan type id this is we are going to use this for the for the for the alert you understand that is uh, our sweet alert we are going to use it there all right so the function is delete already so we are done with this the next thing we are going to do here is that we have this button this two button we need to add it which will become the type of it is going to be submit all right so we we'll save this all right so now as we change this to uh to button type that is uh submit so next thing to do is we have to check on our sweet alert to, to check that our sweet alert is in the dashboard that is the admin dashboard inside this admin we have the admin dashboard this so this is where we use the sweet alert so we can copy this sweet alert this is for the, the confirmed delete that is for the deleting of user so we will now paste it below this we we'll paste it below this place so we can call this confirm delete delete what confirm delete loan loan type so this is the name of the function all right so the name of the function is confirm delete loan type all right so now when you check on this uh here you can see um this is done we don't have any problem with this so what we need to we have to make some little changes so when you look at the user that is when we are deleted, try, trying to delete the user so here you can see in the form we have the id uh, in the form here in the button here we have on click so we have to copy this on click completely to where it is we we'll copy it we we'll now go to this place so for the button we are going to add on click all right so this function the function we created in the dashboard that is confirm delete loan type that's the function we are going to use at this place all right then here is not user id is lt that is our loan type id so we have to change it to lt id all right so that is cool i think this about this then for the dashboard we have to change this here we can say lt id we can just put lt id then copy this then we'll now paste it at this place all right so that is cool 
all right so you can see are you sure you want to delete this user we have to say are you sure you want to delete this loan type loan type all right so now you say if you say yes then it is going to be deleted all right so now let's check it out and see make sure you save everything go to file save all so now when we click the suite alert supposed to display before we remove the item so let's check the code again loan type here we have the form this is the form here delete loan type then lid all right so i think everything is okay let's try it out and see so let's refresh this okay so let's say we want to delete this particular one that is for personal loan all right so we want to delete it so click on delete yes it's supposed to show this for you can see i show you want to delete this loan type when i say cancel it is not deleted so there's some little typo error here we have this i show you want to delete this loan type that's n here all right so save it again so let's refresh it again so you can see are you sure you want to delete this when we say cancel nothing will happen but when we say are you sure you want to delete it we say yes delete so you can see yes the thing is deleted it shows this is deleted but the issue is that when we refresh this page we are still able to see this all right so we have to cross check it and see where the little error is all right so this is not deleting so let's check it out and see when we come back to this file all right so everything here is intact so let's check the controller all right so loan types yes here you can see we have loan type there is no p and when we check this route you can see we have loan type like this so we have to use this exact loan type so here we are going to add this is going to be loan type then here is also going to be loan type so let's click on save control s to save this so as we saved it now let's go and refresh the page again so after we press the page now we we'll click on this when we say cancel nothing will happen when we we'll click on delete now we we'll say yes delete yes you can see loan type deleted successfully and also here we have only three loans all right so we have personal loan business loan auto loan now the one that is missing which is home loan we are going to add it this is it here so we are now sure that we have the loan all right so that is very cool all right so now we are able to delete the loan from the loan type from the database so this is where we are going to stop in this lecture last last things to do here is that we are going to update the loan type all right so to update this loan type we need to create a view that is an edit view so let's go to this let's close this we'll come back to this place we have to go to resources we we'll go to views then we we'll go to admin then we'll loan type all right so inside this loan type we are going to create edit so you can say edit dot blade dot php all right hit enter so we'll extend the admin then after we extend the admin we we'll now add the sections so add session then the session is going to be content all right so this is cool so now let's do this uh, we are done with this particular section so next session is we are going to create a route for that so we'll go to route like this then we have wave and inside is for edit so to edit it all we just need to do we can copy this particular route and paste it below this particular one all right so paste it here so now here the name of the route we can give it this name um loan type edit so we can just do something like this we we'll copy this or we can just do this loan type this is another way to create so loan types slash then we replace the id like this then we now put edit at the end all right so this is a very nice way to do this so after we do this then the name of the the name of the function is going to be edit loan type then here is also admin edit 
loan type all right so this is the first route that we are going to create so this is going to be a get method all right so that is cool so after we are done with this we have to go to admin then we'll now create a function inside this inside this controller so we have to go to the php you have controller backend admin loan type so we are going to create a controller for update all right so to create the controller as usual we know that we are going to use public public function the name of the controller and we'll open round bracket close it we are going to add id inside all right hit enter like this so we are going to first of all we have to call the loan type so we we'll use variable like this loan type is equals to so we say loan type that is this our table model which is loan type like this then we'll now say find find or fail so find or fail of round bracket and close it so we are going to find or fail id all right then we'll now put semicolon at the end so that is this so next we are going to return view so we say return view what view we are going to return we are going to return admin loan type then edit all right so after we return it we are going to compact we are going to compact loan type so this variable we are going to compact it inside all right then we'll now put semicolon at the end so let's press ctrl process to save this so that is all so now this we have to go to the side uh the sidebar section sidebar so this sidebar we don't even need sidebar for now what all you just need to do is the loan that is this page that is displaying everything which is all loan type so i have to go to this loan all loan type so you can see we have the button this is the button here so this button will change the look of it we are going to change it to anchor tag so we say a and here also is going to be anchor tag here this is also going to be anchor tag all right so now next thing is anchor tag always have href so we are going to add the href so inside this href we are now going to call the route so route of a round bracket and close it and the route we are going to use is going to be admin edit admin edit loan type all right so after we do this what loan type are we going to edit so we have to come back to here this is our variable which is loan type like this the one that we have first inside the compact so we come to this place then we we'll now add it off ways this is it here so group comma like this paste this then we are going to edit it by id all right so here is supposed to be this so now we we'll press control process to save this file all right so as we save this now this we have to take care of the way when we click all right so what we just did now what we need to do is let's test this out so we'll come we'll refresh the page Alright, so you can see we have a error. This error says that undefined variable loan type. That is the variable we use here. Alright, so we are going to update it. So here it's not supposed to be loan type. We just need to use the LT. Alright, so this is it here. We were using LT, so we have to use it also at this place. So say LT and save this. So we will now go back again yes so you can see it's there so when we click on update now yeah you can see it takes long type uh loan type 7 then edit so here we don't have the edit design so we need to design the edit page so this edit page it is just going to be same like what we have in the add loan all right or this page that is all loan type so we we'll just have to copy the whole code then we we'll now edit it later on so this code will just copy everything from here. Control C, then edit 
here we are going to paste it all right so after we do that so now we just need only the form so since we need only the form we need to remove this particular one so we have to remove the table from there okay so now when we go there we we'll refresh the page we can be able to see the form this is the form here all right so now as we add the form here this, this is supposed to be update so update this to we'll put this to update all right that's it then long type this cool so next thing to do is so we have to add value to this input that is this particular input we have to add value to it all right so here after the name we'll now put the value so the value is going to be this variable that is this variable so we'll copy this variable from here so we'll now add this here then we'll now use the item which is name right let's check our but uh, database and the database is name you can see it here name right so we have to change it also to name all right so let's press control process to save this so now what we'll do is i will go back to the this particular one you refresh it after we refresh it we click on this yes you can see homeland i will go back to all users i won't go back to loan types again we click on this second one this is you can see personal loan all right so this is best way that we can be able when we click on this you can see business loan all right so that is it now we are able to get the information into this form all right next thing to do is for us to update this so to update this we need to also go and create a route all right so we'll go back to this place this is the route all right so this is this here so we have the wave then this is the route here so we have to create a route for that so copy this all now we'll come back here and paste it so this is going to be loan type then we can just leave only the id no need to put edit all right so when we do this here the name of the function we are going to call it update update loan type and here is also admin update loan type all right so here if you like we can also add the extension of the admin like this all right since we are all dealing with admin here also you add admin that's the route all right so you now press control process to save this so next thing to do is after we create this we need to go create function inside of the controller so come to this place here's the controller here inside the controller we we'll now put public function This is the function or open round bracket then this is going to be a request so we'll say request then we'll create a variable we'll call it request then we can give comma then we'll now create another variable for the id of the particular record that we want to update all right then we'll do this so after we do this now let's create a variable we'll call it loan type then we can say it's equals to so the this this particular model we'll call it then we'll now add it here so loan type we'll do this then we'll now say find we have already been doing this all so we can copy this particular one from here we'll now paste it at this place all right so after we do this next thing to do is if we like we can also validate it Alright, so you know how to do the validation like what we did here. We can just copy this particular one, then we'll now paste it at this place. So this will validate it for us. Alright. So what we are validating now, we can check the the form. This is the edit. So the name is loan type, alright. So we are trying to validate it. So as we click on this to validate this, as we click on it to validate it 
now we mean if it is required so it is going to be required all right so after that we are now going to use this statement so you can now use this same variable that is loan type like this all right so we'll do this update okay so after we do this open round bracket close and this then update you can see loan type update then you put semicolon at the end so now what we are going to update is here in the edit form you can see we have the name of it is loan type so let's copy this name and here we are going to put it like this all right so now what we are using here is that um the thing that we need to check here is that the name of our the name in the database which is name that is what we want to update so here you are going to use name all right now after that we are now going to do this then this is going to be validated that is this validated we we'll copy this all right so copy this validate data all right so this validate data we'll now add it up here like this this is another way to save then what we are going to where we are going to the name of the data is loan type so like this we'll add it up inside after that you just put this so you now press ctrl plus s to save this so after you do this almost everything is cool so all we just need to do is we can now redirect it so first before we direct it let's uh, show a toast so we'll now add the toast at this place like this so you can say loan type is updated loan type is updated successfully so after we do this below it we will now say return then redirect so return redirect to where so we are going to point to route then we'll open the route what route which route are we going to so we can say admin all loan types this then we, that means this particular page the main page no this this page here so that is where we are going to be redirected to all right so now on doing this after we do this the next thing to do is just put semicolon at the end so press ctrl press s to save this all right so i think we don't have any issue let's try it out again so we we'll refresh this page so we'll now click on update so you can see homeland loans let's say we add s or double s so when we click on update you can see loan re re type registered successfully so here there is something an error that we need to there's something that we forgot you can see we just added it instead of updating so the reason we have this let's just delete this mistake first the reason we have this is that here inside this loan inside the edit we are still using admin at loan all right so we need to update it with our new route all right the route that is allowing us to do the update so that is what we're supposed to do so to do that what we need to do come to web here then we have admin update loan type so copy this so this is edit here we'll now click on this to paste it here all right so after we do that next thing to do is this loan type variable that we use the other time so we'll copy it from here also we we'll give comma and we'll now paste it then we will now say update by id all right so this is all we have to do so let's go back and refresh the page again so now let's say we want to edit this personal loan so you can say personal loan then we add something like loan again like this so we'll click on update all right so you can see here is telling us that this is post all right so sorry for this we just need to understand the moment we have error like this so what we need to fix here is that um, here you can see csrf token is there and after that in the form 
we need to indicate the method we are going to use. So the method is method is put like this. All right. So after this, then we are also go to the this we are using get. So we are not supposed to use get. We also supposed to use put. All right, because we are trying to update. So here it will be put like this. And we now save this. So let's go and refresh it again. Let's go back. So this like this. So we'll click on we add loan the other time like this. So let's try it again. All right. So now while little error again, let's try to fix this once and for all. All right. So the reason we have this error here is that we have in this line loan type that is in the update loan type. So this is where we have the problem. So let's go and check it out. So here we have the loan type. So this is the function. All right. Here we have loan type ID. Here I, uh, you can see here we don't we do not we forgot to add ID something like this. So this is all the error. So we save this. So we'll now go back. Oh, we'll go back now. We we'll let's go to the main loan again. We'll start it all over. So we we'll click on business loan. So here we can put something like loan like this all right so let's click on update yes you can see loan type is updated successfully and also here you can see we have double loan all right so let's update it back to the way it was let's remove this then we we'll click on update again yes now we can see everything is updated successfully all right so now we are done with the loan type management See you in the next lecture. Do not forget to leave a review for us. Very nice review. Thank you. In this lecture, we are going to deal with loan application management. So we are done with this section. So for we to do that, we let's support uh, first of all go to the sidebar and add the link to it. So this is it here. We go to resources, views, then we have admin, we have sections, then we have sidebar. So inside this sidebar, this same item that is this particular one, you can copy it and paste it below. So just copy this, then paste it below. So this is going to be loan application management. Alright, so that is it. So this loan application management, now I click on save to save it, I'll go back to this and refresh this can see we have this all right so this loan application management we have some little things that we need to adjust so let's check it out here we have this that is for the loan and this particular one here we have this again all right all right so the reason why we have this we just need to go back and reduce the size of the text so this application we can remove it from the all right so it will be loan management so we'll go back to the we we'll refresh it and you can see we have loan management all right so first of all the first item that we have to check is loan applications so here we are going to change this to loan applications so we just change this to loan applications so you can say view loan applications so it's safe so all the loans that users made they are all going to be inside this all right so that is what we need to do so now next thing after this is let's create a controller so we'll go back to this place we we'll say php artisan make controller so inside this controller we are going to create it inside backend then after that admin folder then we we'll call this loan controller all right and hit enter so now we have loan controller created so when we check this we have this then http and we have controllers backend admin then we have the loan controller here all right so after that we are also going to create model so php artisan make model 
then the name of the model we give it a name of loan application loan application so it is going to be with m that is pro migration so let's hit enter yes so we have created this also successfully so when we, when we minimize everything we we'll come back to have this is model then you can see we have loan model so this loan model the same way we have this protected guard here so we also need to do it on the loan application as well so let's do this and paste it here all right so we are done with this section okay so now next thing to do let's also close this particular one so we are going to work on the migration before we migrate it so this is the migration for the loan application all right so what we need to do here is that we have to add all the items so let's copy this exactly the way it is we we'll copy this we we'll can paste it below so this is going to be string we are going to get the name of the person that is trying to apply so we can say name all right so that's this then after this since we will also add the remaining ones so after name we're supposed to get the email of that user now after email we're also supposed to get uh, we're supposed to also get amount that is the amount that the first one is applying for after the amount we're also supposed to get his bank that is bank name all right so we can say bank and after this the user also supposed to get account number so that is account and after that we also have after account number we also have loan type that is what type of loan did he selected and after the loan type let's also add item so installment that is the installment installment that he used to he want to so installment count that is how many times did he want to be paying that loan and after that we have another one which is installment so installment installment amount right so that is this how much is he going to be paying per each of the installment then after this we also have the amount payable that is the total amount that the person is supposed to pay so we can call it amount payable you can give it any name all right so after amount payable then next we have date applied that is the date that the person applied so date applied all right so after this then we also have the last one which is status so you can say status all right so that is cool that is all so let's press ctrl plus s to save this and we can be able to use this particular one so after we do this next thing to do is come back to this place and now the php artisan migrate and we will now migrate this very nice so now we have our table migrated so let's go to the database and confirm that table is created so this is it here we have the database here then you can see loan applications and the loan applications all the details are there all right so this is very cool so we are going to stop in this stage in the next video in the next lecture we'll continue from where we stop in this lecture we are going to design the loan application view all right so to do that all we just need to do first is we have to create a table and this table is now going to page all the loan details all right so let's begin with that so to do this if you can remember we use users that is all users this all users contains this particular type of page which we can be able to see all the records from the user so we can be able to utilize this so to use this what we need to do first is let us go and create the view all right so to create the view all we need to do here is that 
if I minimize this, we we'll go to resources, we have views, then we have admin, and you can see only loan type. So we are going to create another folder. We can call it loan. All right. So this loan, we can say loan application. That is the name of the folder. So loan underscore application. All right. So inside the loan application, we are now going to create a page. We can call it all underscore uh, all dot blade dot php all right so as we do this next thing to do we are going to extend the dashboard so you can say extend admin dashboard then after we extend the dashboard now we can be able to add the section so inside this section we are going to put the content all right so that is cool Okay, so after we do this, we already created loan controller. So we need to create a route for it. So we have to go to route, then web. Then inside this, we are now below this, we are going to create another group of routes. So here it looks like this. All right, so first of all, we are going to page all the records, all the loan. All right, so we do it like this. We we'll paste it like this. Then we get admin all loan. So we can say all loan applications. All right. Then here is going to be all loan applications. That's the name of the function. All loan applications. Then the name of the route is also going to be all loan applications. Yes, this is very cool. Then the name of the controller, we just need to add it up here also. That is the loan loan controller. So let's just paste it here. And it's also inside the admin controller. So this is going to be loan controller, something like this. So we can copy this. Now we'll now add it up inside this. That is this particular one here. This is going to be loan controller. All right, so this is very cool. So let's save this. So we can now follow it very easy. Here, we remember we have another one which is loan type. So as we want to build the loans, all we just need to do is that we need to create a function for that. So the function is also going to be public, public function. Then the name of the function is the same name we give in the route that is all loan applications so let's press this to paste it then we'll open round bracket close it then we we'll now open curly braces and close it then all right so after we do this next thing to do is we have to add the meta the model into this controller so use half then models then the name of the model that we created which is inside this model folder here the name of it is you can see loan application so let's copy this now we'll go to the controller then we will now paste it here then we'll put semicolon at the end so after we do this now the next thing to do is we we'll press control to save it then we can now create a variable this variable we can give it a name of loan now we can say it's equals to this particular model so loan application then latest we won't get it with the latest input so let us then get and we'll put semicolon at the end so this is cool so after we do this next we have to just return a view that is we are going to return a view so the view we are going to return is going to be admin loan application down all this is it here now after we do this next we are going to convert this loan so we can say convert convert loan like this all right so when we do this now next we just 
put, put semicolon at the end so we are done with this so now we have to go to the wave we will now copy this route name all right admin or loan applications so we'll come back to sidebar so in the sidebar you can see view loan applications so here is going to be loan application all right so now let's go to file and we save all okay so we'll now go back and refresh this page to come uh, to test it out and see so here you can see loan application when i click on view loan application yes it says admin all loan applications but we did not get the record because we do not add the table so to add the table let's just do simple thing uh we are going to close all this here also we we'll close it so we now come back to resources we have views we have admin then we have users then all users so inside this all users let's just copy this whole code starting from this style or the toggle down to the last one before this section so let's copy everything from here then we'll go back to loan application all loan between this we will now paste it all right so as we paste it now you can see here is going to be loan application management all right so that is cool so after that all the records we have in the database we are now going to add them here so in the record if we can check it properly here we have let me do in a structure mode we have name email amount all right so we have name email then here is supposed to be amount all right so we can say amount then this serial number we can just leave it as sn so capital letter s then capital letter n all right so name email amount so after that we have the items we have the other items name email amount bank then account number so you can see we have name email amount then bank after bank then we have account account number so you can say ac number that is for account number all right so now we have this here we have name email then here we we're supposed to write amount all right so after the amount then we we'll now add again after the amount we we'll add another item all right so after amount we have bank all right so after bank then we copy this again we we'll paste it so we have num account that is how we write it in the database here you can see it this is account all right so that is it here so after we do this let's try something we are going to copy this okay so you can see the heading of it is approve loan so approve loan so that's the heading and here it is going to work with this particular item all right so now what we did in the controller here we have to controller backend admin then loan controller so we created this loan variable we compact it here so we have to also use it here so you can see all uh, this loan as key so we can say loan like this or ln so this is very cool let's use ln so this ln now we'll copy it we'll replace it with this so this is ln name then we have also we have ln email we have ln amount we have ln bank we have ln account and here is going to be ln that's for the toggle is going to be ln id then we also have here ln 
all right so this is going to be ln status all right so we are going to work on this very well then there is also going to be ln this is also going to be ln like this all right so after we do this uh we don't even need this this particular one we don't need this so let's just remove it from there completely okay so let's save this and let's preview it and see what we have over here so you can see we have serial number we have name email amount bank account number then approve loan all right so this is cool this is what we have currently all right so this is very cool so we are going to stop here in the next lecture we'll continue from where we stopped in this lecture we are going to design loan application page in the users dashboard so we are going to use user dashboard to we are going to use user detail to log into the system all right all right so now we are plugged in as a user so you can see the dashboard of the user is quite different from the other dashboard all right so let's now modify this particular sidebar so to change the sidebar all we need to do is we'll go back to the loan this is it here so we have the resources we have views then we have user so inside the user we have section and we also have sidebar so this sidebar this is where we are going to make the changes we don't need this let's just remove this user because we don't need anything in that if we can retrieve it back you can see we don't have anything inside so we are going to remove it so when we remove it press ctrl plus s to save this so when i now refresh yeah i have only this product so i have to customize the product so i will now say loan management so this is it here this product i'll just call it loan loan details we can say loan details all right so now press ctrl plus s to save this so we now refresh it yes we have loan details so inside this the first thing we have to do is we have to add loan application so we now update this to apply for loan apply for loan all right so apply for loan this is it then press control plus uh, to save this and we'll now come back to this place we'll refresh it yes we can see we have apply for loan all right so we have to design the application so for you to design the applications as usual we need to go and create we need to go and create we have, we have to go and create a route so for you to create the route we we'll just come to our to this place here we'll minimize all this we'll go to route wave so this time around this is where we are going to create the route that is inside the role user all right so we we'll to create the route since it is going to be just to build the application page so all we have to do is we can just copy this particular one we we'll now paste it here all right so after we paste it next thing to do is we can now say this user apply user loan application right so user loan that's the name of the route loan application all right then the controller is going to be loan controller we already created a controller loan controller then here we are going to call the 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 function which is going to be loan application then we can say user here also user then we we'll copy this loan like this then the name of the route loan 
application all right so this loan application will copy everything from here also so we'll come back to our loan controller so inside this loan controller we are going to create a function so it's going to be a public function all right so now this is going to return view for us all right so for now we are just going to return views so now say return view so what type of view are we going to return so here we have to create the view so we have to go to resource it we have to go to views then inside the user we are going to create a folder so this folder is going to be loan we can just call it loan all right so that's going to be the folder which is loan okay so we can say loan underscore application then hit enter for that all right so inside we are going to create file we can say application application dot blade dot php yes this is cool so now here we have to call we have to extend the we have to extend the user loan application yes we have to extend this but it's supposed to be user let's remove it again user dash dashboard we have a dashboard here let me remind you that as we are doing for the admin so this is time around it's going to be for the user this is the dashboard here so say user dashboard all right then we have to add section so you can say section that is closed open and close and inside the section we use content this is very nice so let's save this so as we save it we we'll now go back to our controller who we'll can say return is going to return view so return view then the view we are going to return is going to be inside the user folder the loan application then application all right now we'll put semicolon at the end let's save this then lastly we'll come back to the route we we'll copy the name of the route here as usual so we'll go back to the sidebar this sidebar belongs to user section so apply for loan this is going to be where we are going to use the sidebar so open colibris open this then we can say route then after that we will now paste this all right so user loan application let's press ctrl plus s to save this so we'll now go back to this place say let's refresh this page so click on this loan details then apply for loan all right so this method we have to make changes to the route so let's go back to the route this is the route here it's not post we have to say get because we are trying to view information so let's come back yeah you can see we click on it it opens the user loan application page so next thing to do is we are now going to add the application we have to design the application page so i have already get a file that i'm going to attach for you to use so this is it here the sample of it we we'll just copy this exactly the way it is if i open it in browser this is how it looks like this is how it looks like very nice all right so now we have to close this <coughs> so let's open this with bs code so now we'll cut this away not this this particular one that is this div we will now copy it exactly from here so after doing that we can close this we'll come back to the loan application 
here we'll paste it inside the section so we'll press ctrl plus s to save it all right so that's cool so when we are done with this next thing to do we can now go back and preview what we just did now so let's click on this yes so you can see we have our loan application form all right from here user can be able to apply for loan so this is how it works loan application the amount the user want to collect you now put his bank detail bank name account number then personal uh, you select the type of the loan this is going to be dynamic we are going to change it to dynamic then here is going to be installment count that is how many times you want to be paying the installment amount that is how much he is going to be paying per that installment then here it is now going to show the amount of money he is going to pay plus 10 percent of the actual amount so we are going to do all those things all right so here we are coming to the end of this lecture next we are going to continue from where we stopped in this lecture we want to forplate this loan type with the data that we have in the loan type table all right so that is what we want to do so for we to do that all we just need to do is first of all we have to we have to create relationship between the two table all right so to create a relationship between the two table we have to go to the model all right so let's go to the model so here we have let's close this also you don't need this also learn application controller let's close this so first now let's go to the model so model is inside of models so open loan application model so inside this we'll create the first relationship so here we are going to create a function we'll call it public function we can call it loan type all right so now open curly brace and close it under this so now say return this belongs to then this we are now going to call the other that is the loan type this particular loan type model So loan types then class all right so we are done with this first part we save it then we open the loan type also so inside the loan type we are also going to create the relationship so here it is also going to be public function we'll call it loan application loan applications like this all right so we now say return this you can say has many so here we are going to call the loan application model so we are also going to utilize the class in it all right and we'll put semicolon at the end so now we are done with this also so next we have to go to the controller so the loan controller http controllers then we have backend we have admin then loan controller so inside this loan controller you can see this is the this is the function that used to display this view all right so we have to attach some things into it so before we attach things let's now call the model that is the loan type model also so i'll just copy this i'll paste this and here is going to be loan types like this all right so after the loan types here we are now going to create a variable we'll call it loan types is equals to loan type that is this this model like this then we will now say all all 
all right then we now put semicolon at the end so this is cool so now the last part is we have to go to the view that is this particular view this whole form view so we have to go to the form view so to do that let's minimize all this we go to resources we have views then we have users then we have loan application we we'll double click on this to open this so this is it here so here we have to remove this three we'll change this to select loan type so we'll do something like this select loan type like this and here we'll remove the value from personal we'll say selected this is the selected item so after we do this next we have to create for each so we'll say for each so for each we create a variable a variable which you get from the controller this is it loan type so let's just copy this compact but we have to compact it here we already know that so we'll say comma comma then we now type compact all right and we'll paste it inside here so now we'll come back to this place we'll now add it off like this then as we can create another variable loan type we can say as lt all right so inside this for each we are now going to add the option all right so the option the first value is going to be this lt dot id that is id we are going to use the id first so lt like this then we have id all right so after we do this inside this other one we can just copy this exactly the way it is so we now paste it at this place all right so next thing to do is we'll now say name all right so press ctrl plus s to save this so that is all we have to do so now let's go there and refresh this yes as we refresh it here it remains select loan type when we click on the drop down you can see we have all these four loan types from our database that is from this database here all right so here we have come to the end of this lecture we'll meet in the next lecture do not forget to drop review for this lecture in this lecture we are going to calculate the installment and all the necessary calculations so this is how it is going to be let's assume we add something like 1000 as the loan amount that the applicant is applying for so after filling the bank and account number we sell after selecting the loan type next the installment here if let assume user decide to pay in three times all right so the installment amount will automatically calculate then the, uh, w together with the amount which is 10 percent interest all right so it will calculate the installment after adding the 10 percent interest and automatically display it here that means how much the applicant is going to be paying anytime that they do uh, anytime the loan is due then the amount interest that means the amount plus 10 percent that means this 1000 plus 10 percent of it is going to be automatically calculated here so this is what we are going to do so for we to do that we have to go back to the code then we'll go to the view we are going to use javascript to do this so we have this we'll go to user loan application loan application here all right so now after we did get this next thing to do is this user we have dashboard so we just open the dashboard this is where we are going to add the javascript all right so now we can just type script like this so i have a simple i have generated the code for you guys it's just very easy this is it here i'll explain it so this is calculate installment so i'm going to open it in bs code also after i do that then i will now put it down for we to all digest in it all right so this is it here so i also put this file for you to use so i'll copy everything from here all right then i'll go back to the dashboard this is the dashboard here i'll paste it at this place 
so the name of the function is calculate installment all right then after that here you can see we have a sample of it here so how we utilize it we are going to use it on input on input that means immediately when we input the when you immediately when we input the amount this function will be called all right and also when we input the installment count again the function is also going to be called so we are going to call the functions two times all right so now let's go back to the dashboard this is the dashboard all right so as we create the function let's call it inside our inside the input all right so here we have the post input this is it here so we'll now paste the on input method which is calculate installment then for the that is for the loan amount then also we are going to use it for the installment this is the installment count we are also going to use it as i describe it to you in the example here all right so we are going to use it for the installment count so we'll just put it also here this is how we do it all right so after we do this now next thing to do is we have to come back to dashboard here you can see we have to create an id for all the inputs so we'll copy this amount we'll go back the the amount this is loan amount we have to add id you can see we have id amount so this is cool then we have installment count so we have to also add this also so installment count so we have this installment count this is installment count then the id we have to change it to installment count this is the only way it will work then we also have installment amount so we'll copy this installment amount you can see this is installment amount we also have to change it to installment amount all right and after that the last one amount plus 10 percent that is the final amount which is this particular one so the id will also change it like this so this is cool all right so now we have function calculate installment then it will get all the values by id that's here this this and this after that we say amount value is equals to first amount input this amount you put the value it is going to convert it into number all right so after that here is also going to convert it into into plot that is something a plotting variable with a decimal point then if not available that is there is no input in this and also there is no input in this converted and there is also no input in this so it's zero so it is not going to do anything all right if not if not is none that means if we have when we have the content so here we get all the variable we have constant installment amount amount times 1.1 that is amount times what a 10 percent all right all right so amount times one for uh 1.1 then divide by divide by installment value that is this installment value all right that means when we put for example as i explained 1000 and we put installment all right so this is now going to this this now going to divide it into three you get it right all right then we have const amount plus 10 percent then it's equals to amount that means whatever amount we have here then times this 1.1 1 .1, all right so first of all the installment value is going to be it will take the amount times 1.1 1 .1, that means it will get the 100 uh, temper amount plus the 10 percent then divide it into installment count that is this installment count all right so after you do that next it will now the amount plus 10 percent is now going to remain amount value times uh 1.1 1 .1, which is 10 percent all right so after that installment amount dot value that installment amount dot value is equals in smaller amount then to picks two so it will abbreviate it it will be two numbers after the small point likewise this also amount plus 10 percent is also the value is going to be two percent after uh two two numbers after the small point it will approximate it all right then else if there's no in uh, information then installment amount the value it will remain empty then 
amount plus 10% is also going to remain empty. So let's press Ctrl plus S to save this. So we'll now come back to this place. We'll make sure that we also save this. After we do that, now we can be able to come and refresh this page. Alright, so as we refresh it now, let's add the information. So let's assume we are going to, we need the loan of 2000 then the bank we can put any bank all right then the account number we can put any account number then we will now select the loan type we need then the installment we can put something like we want to fit it like five times so five times you know the moment we put five times here you can see installment amount have changed to 4400 uh, 440 that's the installment then the total amount that means from the 10 percent of the 2000 which is 2200 then here also it added the 10 percent before it divided into this five because 4440 uh, times five it will give you 200 and 2200 all right so this is how we will do this all right so here we, can, we have come to the end of this lecture next we are now going to store the information and do so many things before then all right so see you in the next lecture all right so now as we are done with this calculation so we are now going to store the loan into the database all right so now we, we can remember we created the table inside our database all right so it is loading so now let's go back to the code editor I'm going to close this we are done with it and here we also have this so we have to we close the dashboard also we are done with it as well all right so this is the loan application table we have name email amount and all the other necessary items all right so we are going to work with them all at once all right, so now what we have to do first is let's come back to this place. We are going to create a route for the saving of the information into the database. So we have to web. So inside this, we'll now create another route. We'll save it here. So this route, we can say user loan store. All right user loan store and here you can say loan store that's the name of the function loan store then user loan store is the name of the route all right so let's save this after we do this we are now going to create function inside the loan controller so we'll go back to f We'll come to http controllers back and admin the loan controller then here we are going to create the function so public function so this function is going to be request because we are going to get information from form we'll create a variable we'll call it request All right, so now after we do this, first, next thing to do is we have to use auth that is to get the person that is uh, that is storing the data, the, to get the person that is applying for this loan. All right, so to do that, we have to, it's just very easy. All we just need to do is we need to call the auth. We need to call the auth. So we have to do something like this. We'll say use half then we don't need to say half let's just use illuminate all right so use illuminate then this and we now have support after support we are now going to use packet then this then we are also going to use auth. Then we'll put semicolon at the end. So this is very cool. All right. So now here, 
we have to use the odds to get the current user that is trying to apply for this loan so we'll get we'll just do id is equals to odd then user then we are now going to get id of that user all right so this is it so press ctrl plus s to save this so when you come back to this table you can see we have we have user here then we have id so that is the id we want to take all right so let's go back to the loan application so now after we get the id next thing to do is we are going to get data from this particular user so we'll say data so data is equals to so we are going to get it from user model you can see we have model which is user model this user model so we can copy this and paste it below then here we now call it user all right so after we do this next here we will now utilize the user all right so we'll copy this also we we'll paste it at this place then we we'll now say find find what is going to find id that is this particular id all right so now we get all the details of that particular user all right so now after we do this we have to use time we are going to use time so for we to use time we will use carbon so this is it here use carbon like this and now put slash then after that you use this forward slash after the forward slash then we will now say carbon then put semicolon at the end all right so this will allow us to use time so now here we are going to get today's date all right that is the date that that user is trying to apply so we'll create a variable we'll call it today it's equals to carbon then now open round bracket and close it all right so now we get to this date then next is we are going to format the date all right therefore it will show year month and date so to format it we can just use this we can create a variable we'll call it formatted formatted date formatted date then you say it's equals to this today's date all right so it's equals to today then the format we are going to specify the format and format is going to be like this we have y dash m dash d then we now put semicolon at the end all right so we do this next thing to do is we are now going to insert the record into the database all right so for we to insert the record into the database all we have to do is we are going to call this the name of our this is loan application that's the model so we have to call it here so loan application then we will now say insert then we are going to insert it in form of array that is all the record make sure you put semicolon at the end here so now what we are going to insert first we have we know that in the database we have name so copy name like this so we have to do this name so where are we going to get in the name the name of that user so here you can see in the form in this form here we do not specify where the user will write name so we want to take the name directly from the account of the user so that is what we are doing so here we will now say data so this is going to be data data name all right that's the name so after this 
we can copy this and paste again for the email because the next item we have here is email so copy the email also so here it will be email then here also is going to be data email that is email of that user all right then after that we will now deal with the next item which is we'll open this place we can see we have amount right so we have to get the amount so amount is going to be request so request then we do this amount all right so in the request amount so the request amount let's check and make sure that this is it here you can see amount is there all right so request amount here we have a simple error that we need to fix all right so so here it's not supposed to be semicolon we put comma here also we are going to place comma here is also going to be comma all right so press ctrl s to save so we can repeat this as many times as possible all right like this so here the next items we have we have the bank that is the bank so we are going to copy it also and paste it into the bank that is here bank is also going to be request bank then after this we have account number so we can say account number this request is going to be account number then here we put account all right so we are going to use account at this place here all right so after the account now we can still copy this and paste many times because we have some other items so paste this so now here we have loan type all right so copy the loan type so the loan type after the account we have loan type we paste it here that is the loan type here then in the in this the loan type here we give it a name of loan type as well that's our request so we use the loan type as well all right so after the loan type the next things we have here is we have the installment count so here installment count we copy this the name should also be installment count so let's take installment count that is our request installment count is here then here also we can see we have installment count all right so this is just very easy all right so you learn a lot of things in this course do not forget to always keep good uh good review all right so after installment count then we have installment amount so copy this and paste it here so installment amount that's it what we have next here is going to be installment amount then from the database we also use it as installment amount all right installment amount like this so after this we have uh next item let's copy this and paste it below this particular one all right so the next item there is we have amount payable like this so amount payable here this is going to be amount payable then from here you can see we have amount plus the interest right so it's going to be amount payable so let's copy this amount payable from here we we'll also use it amount payable at this place here so after this in our database we are also expecting date applied that is the date that person applied so the date that person applied here we already created formatted date all right so we will now take this input let's copy this also we'll paste it like two times so here we'll take the date applied like this so this is going to be the date applied then the date applied there we have this formatted date and so that is what we are going to use all right so we will now say formatted date all right so after this then we are going to deal with the status 
either the loan is approved or is not approved so we'll put state to sale then the default we are going to put we are also going to put a string for the default we will say not approved so you can say not approved like this then we'll now press ctrl plus s to save this all right so the moment we do this next thing to do is we have to after we store it as we do earlier we can check on this we can just copy this all right here we can copy this we we'll now paste it into this you already know what i did so i'll explain it again so we have toast success loan we can say loan applied successfully loan applied successfully all right then it will return and redirect back so we now save this all right so that is cool here also we have to save it we make sure that the input type but here is button and after that we we'll come to the form we have to specify the method of that form which is going to be first then the action so the action of this form is going to be from our route that is user loan store so we are going to use the action at this place so we'll say route then this then we now paste it like this all right then press control process after we do this then we'll now add csrf token so we use csrf token all right so now let's save this after we do this so we'll now come back to the form try to refresh it so as we are refreshing it now here the heading is saying admin dashboard so we can just easily fix that let's come to the dashboard of the user so from the top admin is supposed to be user dashboard so let's save this and now we'll come back to this place we'll refresh it so you can see user dashboard all right so now let's try to save let's try to apply for a loan so i'll apply for hundred thousand all right then my bank i'll put something like first bank all right then the account number i'll put like one one two two zero zero one one two two all right then the loan type i will say business loan then the installment i'm going to be paying this in 10 times so let me put 10. so you can see my installment is always going to be eleven thousand until when i finish paying the whole amount which is hundred and ten thousand plus the ten percent interest based on the agreement so you click on submit all right so now we have simple error we have to check the route we copy the route so we have to check it and change it to post not get all right so we save this all right all right so now you can see the method is post not get so let's go back okay so let's refresh this so you can see loan applied successfully so let's now open this you can see the detail of the loan applied all right so let me remove this data and do it again so let me refresh this so here we say the amount we can put 200,000 then the bank we put first first bank amount account number we can put one two three four three two one something like this then this is for personal loan installment i'll pay in 15 times so you can see this is how much i'm going to be paying then this is the amount so let's submit it yes you can see congrat loan applied successfully all right so when we come to the database we can be able to see the loan all right everything is intact all right so the here we have come they can see not approved the date is there also amount and everything is there all right so here we have come to the end of this lecture 
In the next lecture, we'll continue from where we stop. In this lecture, we are going to check the admin section to make sure that the data we have submitted from the users section is there in the admin section. You remember, this is where we stopped in the user session. User can be able to apply for the loan. All right. So after doing this, next thing to do now is when we go to the admin session, this is the loan we submitted the other time. Then this is the detail here. So let's now go and check the admin session. All right. So I've already opened another browser. This is admin dashboard. So in the admin dashboard, you can see we created this view the other time that is view loan applications. So click on this. All right. So we can click, when we click it, you can see now we are able to see this record from that this record. This is admin all loan application. So let's check the page. All right. So we have resources, views, admin loan all all right so we have this values all right then we also have this values as well all right so now this record that we can see we are already patching it from the database we already did that the other time so now in this admin dashboard this record we are seeing they are all from the database when we open the database from here that is this particular place this is the database here so you can see this record that we submitted we have the amount this is amount to 2000 then we have the amount payable all right so everything is there intact what we need to do now is that we can be able to see the installment count then we can also be able to see the installment that the user is going to be paying then the amount that's what we did not include in the admin section that is in this table all right so so far now what we have to do is that we have to increase this therefore we can be able to see the other details so to increase this we can just go back to the admin view page that is this particular place so after account number then let's copy like two table head We'll face them so inside this database here we have we have installment uh, loan type we already know the type of the loan that the person selected and we have the installment count then we have the installment amount then amount payable so let's say installment amount then amount payable all right so we can come back to this place here all right so here we have this we will now create for we to view all the records let's at the end add a button this button we are going to call it view records all right so this same button we use it in this view this particular place we can use this type of record or we can come to this place we can use this type of button so it's inside admin all users so let's just go there so let's control z this save this then we have admin users all users so this all users we have a button that will allow us to view all the records so this is the button here so let's copy this button exactly the way it is all right so we can now come back to this all here we'll now say we'll create another button first of all here let's add td that is table data inside the table data i'll paste this all right i'll paste this particular button here okay so when we do this next thing to do is uh let me remove this for now let me remove this therefore i can be able to see the button so i'll remove this save this then here at the top i'll copy this particular header that is the table head then i'll call it action all right so now let's save this so we'll come back to the admin view that is this we'll click on this 
yes you can see action then view details so we can say view details that means view this loan detail so that is what we are going to do all right so that is cool so now what we need to do is we have to create a page just like what we did here when we come to user we click on user we click on view details you can see we're able to see all the details so this is same things that we're going to do you can see this is inside admin user detail right so let's also go to that page we have admin user details this is detail here so we can do same things as we did the other one so what we have to do here is that inside loan application we create another file we give it a name of detail so detail dot blade dot php all right so now this user detail here copy everything from this we will now paste it in this detail all right so we are going to change a lot of things inside all right so that is cool let's save this all right so now next thing to do all right so now on this as we did here we click on this we click on this you can see this now we have to link it off with this particular uh, record so to do that we have to link it through this button so what we have to do go back to there this is the page here that is all right this is it here so here you can see as we did for all users we have this so we can just copy this exactly the way it is you copy this i will now come back to this place this is the href for the button you can see the button view detail so this is the home page and we'll paste it so this here is not supposed to be uh, with the route we are going to create a route so for you to create the route we already know that we have to go to the route then wave all right so for the user the other term this is the route we use for the user this is it here admin user detail this is it here then we give it a name of user detail so let's copy this it's also a get route so now we come under this that is for the loan application now we paste this so this is admin loan detail all right so you can say admin loan detail and here also we'll call it loan detail all right so here it's not going to be user detail we are going to call it loan detail and it's also going to be inside loan controller i hope you understand what i'm doing you are, you are free to ask question all right so now this is cool so we have to create this loan detail inside this controller so this is same things we do for the admin that is this place we have controller backend admin then user controller so user detail this is user detail here you can see it so we just copy this so we'll go back to the controller that is loan controller here so we are now going to paste it so we'll go back to this this is loan detail our own is loan detail so we have to copy this then we'll now paste it here all right i hope you understand what i'm doing all right so now after we do this next thing to do is this loan detail we are going to get the loan so you can just say loan like this then the model we are going to use is loan application so copy this model we paste it here all right we are also using id that is the id here right then where we are going to send this loan we are going to compact it and send it into admin this is the this is the this is the view admin dot so we have the folder here admin loan application then all right so this is it here. so admin loan application we we'll say loan underscore that's the name of the folder application loan application then detail this is the detail here then we now compact it with this loan that is very nice so now after we do this 
next thing to do is let's go to this de details page all right so we'll double click on this this is the details page here all right so on this details page we already know that um we don't have anything to do with image let's just remove the image completely or we can comment it out we don't need it anymore then here we need the uh, user name all right all right so here we are going to specify the name on that loan all right so you remember from our controller here we have this loan variable that we confact so we have to come back to the details so inside the loan detail here is going to be loan name we already have the name in our database this is it here name email amount we are going to take all these columns so let's do this all right so we have name right after the name we have email then we have amount all right so let's go back to there and update it so loan name then we have loan a loan email that is email attached to that loan all right so that's now for now this is what we have then next here we are going to check and see what do we have all right so if the now we are going to you can see if we save this here we have to check it's not status inside this we have no status also it's also status so that is the status so let's open it we use not approved all right so if it is we have to check it and see if it is approved then the check box the the switch is going to be switched on so loan here is going to be loan status approved all right so if it is approved then it's going to be checked otherwise it's not going to be checked all right so this is very cool then after that we have to we did this then this is also we already have the loan email here then here is also going to be loan we can say amount then loan let's check it from the database so loan amount bank account now we can put bank and account so loan then here is also going to be loan or we'll foot bank all right so after that we'll copy this again we'll now put loan account all right so here we we'll put amount Then this particular one is going to be phone. All right, so uh, I don't think. Let's see if we have phone. We don't have phone. We only have bank account amount email, right? Already have the email at there. So this particular one, we can put something like status. Let's leave it as status. We can take it to be the last item. Control X. Then put it below this particular one then this is going to be status then this is loan status we can view the status then this is bank then this is account that is account number all right so now save this after that next thing here is also going to be loan all right this is no user id is going to be loan id all right so that is cool next oh, we have to create this route you remember how we do this the other time this user toggle status that is in the web here we have user toggle status this is it here so let's copy this whole route so come back here and paste it so admin loan this is supposed to be admin loan id toggle status right we can call it toggle status no problem then here also the function name toggle status then the this is loan toggle toggle status so say loan toggle status 
then here we are going to use loan controller all right so what we have to do now is we are just going to add this function inside our loan controller which we already have it in the users controller so let's check it out this is toggle status so we can just copy this toggle status from here then we have to come back to this place and paste it all right so toggle status then this is going to be loan application that is this place loan application then here we have to use loan not user so loan the loan status that is to toggle it so if uh, the status is if, if we toggle it initially suppose be approved all right then if we did not toggle it it's supposed to be not approved not approved all right then it will save this then it will now say loan status all right loan loan status updated successfully then we now press ctrl plus s to save this all right you also have the id here all right so now that's for this okay so here for the details i think we have everything so this should be the route is not user it's loan toggle status so loan toggle status now press control to save this here also we'll save this all so let's go back and check it out so here we have this let's refresh this all right so we have one little issue that we need to fix that is in the all blade loan application all blade so all blade we it is saying that we don't have a user all right so let's check it out and see all right so let's do it together now this is the error we encounter that is you can see it here in the all that is loan application all blade so in line 94 user detail then here is saying user id so we have to fix this all right so to do that let's go to the file this is all loan so here 94 this is it here so here you know we are not using user id this is ln id this particular ln so that is what we are using so we copy it and paste it here then when we click it's supposed to take us to loan application id that is our route this is the route loan detail this is the route here so this is the route where it is going to take us to not user detail it's supposed to be loan detail so we press control to save this so we'll come back again yes you can see it refresh immediately with the help of bit so now when we click on this yeah it now take us to this particular place so this is the name of the uh, applicant which is regular user this is his email then the user detail here we're supposed to put it to be loan detail so let's come back to the detail all right the detail this is the detail here so this is going to be all right so we have to this is supposed to be loan application we have to say loan application detail all right say we save it now let go and refresh it loan application detail all right then the amount is twenty thousand bank this is past bank account number this is it then the status is not approved here we can be able to change the status all right so now let's preview the remaining information for the loan so to do that we we'll just come back to this place let's copy this remaining four list two let's add two so in the database we have we have uh installment and amount payable so let's just add those ones so installment installment then amount payable that is amount plus interest 
all right so here is loan then installment installment amount installment amount that is this 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 particular one installment amount then amount payable the last item so we are going to add amount payable amount payable like this then we now press control plus s to save this let's preview it and see yes you can see this is the amount that we're supposed to this is the the amount that is this is the installment then this is the amount payable that is amount plus the 10 percent the 10 percent which is 20 thousand on 200 thousand so let's remove this underline from this one it's just very easy you don't need to waste much time for this all right here also we remove this and press control process to save this let's go back and refresh it again yeah so we have this so now this toggle when we toggle on it all right so we have some error so inside that is loan controller here it says user save so we are not using user save so we have to go to the controller loan controller then this after we toggle is supposed to be loan save so we save it like this all right so let's go back to there so let's go and refresh it again so let's try to click on this yes you can see loan status updated successfully now the status have changed to approved when we do it back you can see loan started updated successfully now the status is not approved so let's approve it yes so now we are able to approve the loan all right so we are going to stop at this in the next lecture we'll continue from where we stop in this lecture we are going to work on this admin section all right you can see here we can see all ad, uh, loan applications all right so we want a situation where all the loan that is already approved it should not be displayed here that means we only see the loan that is not approved so first of all we need to remove this we need to remove this because when we go to the loan uh, detail we are able to change the status from here so we need to remove it from this particular place so to remove it what we just need to do we just need to go to all loans all right this is the thing so this approved loan we remove this then we we'll also come back to this and remove this so that is all we have to do so let's press ctrl plus s to save it so we'll go back and refresh this yes we can only see view detail so it's so clean like this so next after this what we have to do is when we come back to this view we have to only see the loan that is not approved so this loan is already approved so to do that we have to go to the controller so this is loan controller so at the top we say all loan you can see it here so this is where we are going to make changes so to make these changes what we need to do is when we say all loan so we are going to use let's make it let's use the like i utilize the use of db that is for database so let's copy this now we we'll now paste it and here we will now say db all right so after we do this we we'll save this now we have to modify this so we can just take away everything from here so let's take everything away from this place so we'll now say db like this then table so open round bracket and close the round bracket we we'll now specify the name of the table so the name of the table is this is it here the name of the table is loan applications so this is it here so we have to copy it from here then we we'll now come back to this place so loan applications all right so after we do this then we we'll now do like this this is a query we'll say where then open round bracket then status so where status 
all right so where status we put comma in front of status then we now indicate the status so what we always see as the default in this particular section here or oh, click on it what we always see it always go not approved all right so not approved is the default we already know that we did it earlier so here we say where status is not approved all right so that is it so after we do this next we'll now say get all right we'll put around bracket close it then at the end we'll now put semicolon so while we do this so this is going to solve the problem so when we press ctrl plus s to save this we'll go back to there let's refresh this page yes you can see we cannot be able to see anyone all right so that is very cool all right so now next thing to do is we are going to create another link we are going to call it view approved loans so to do that we'll come back to let's come back to this we'll go to the admin inside the admin we have section and we have sidebar so for the admin we have the first item the one that we just worked on now which is bill loan applications so we'll copy this and next thing we'll just copy it and paste it below so this particular one is going to be bill approved loan so you can say bill approved loan so there may be many so loans so let's go back there and refresh the page so you can see bill approved loans so when we click on it we want to see the same item that we can see here so what we need to do we need to create um, a route for that so to create the route for that let's go to the web so for the route you can see we can use the same type of route so we'll copy this route We'll paste it below that all right so admin all approved all approved loans so that's the name of the uh there's the url all right then here we can see admin loan admin approved admin approved loan so you can say like this admin approved loan then here is going to be admin all approved loans yes so now we are done with this particular section this is very cool so after we do this we we'll now go to the loan controller and create this function so let's do this we copy this this is loan controller we can do it immediately after this particular place here so we can say public function open round bracket close it then we'll do this all right so as we do this next thing is we can copy the same information like this or what we have to do is we can just take this completely the way it is we'll paste it at this place so the different is that this is going to be approved so where status is approved so next we are now going to create a view all right so view is going to be inside this loan application so we'll come back this is loan application so we can call create a file we can see approved approved dot blade dot php all right so upload dot blaze dot php this is the name of the file so this approved dot blaze dot php is going to be same with this particular one that is all so we just copy everything from here control a copy everything 
then we'll now come back to the approved then we'll now paste it all right so when we do this everything will go the way it's supposed to so we don't have any problem let's save this so next thing to do is in the sidebar we have to use this route name that is admin all approved loans so in the sidebar we'll come back we use this admin all approved loans so we now paste it like this then we'll press ctrl plus s to save it all right so let's check it out and see so here when we refresh we know we don't, we don't have anything so when we click on the drop down we see view approved loans so we'll click on this here we have a an issue so this is saying yes definitely so when we click on this now it is not showing us anything admin all approved loans is not showing anything so let's check it out all right so why we are seeing that error is that in the loan that is this particular place here we only mention the query so we also need to return view so let's copy this view from here then we we'll now paste it below so you can say loan application approved so we'll save this so when we save it we'll now go back to the we'll click on this this is view applications so we'll come back to loan application approved then we can see we are we can be able to see the approved loan applications when we click on view you can see we are able to see the details of that particular loan all right so here we have come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we'll continue from where we stop in this lecture we are going to see how the user can be able to view his loan if it is approved or it is not approved so we are going to modify this is a user's panel so we are going to modify this link to view approved loan so to do that we will now come back to this we have the views resource views go to users then we can see we have section and we have sidebar so this sidebar this is going to be view approved loan view approved loan all right so that is cool so now after that we have to go to the user we have to create a route inside the user so this is the all the users route so we have to create them so to do that we can since it is get so we can just copy this exactly like this then we'll now paste it at this place so user approved we can say user approved loan all right then here you also call it approved loan approved loan all right then here we we'll now say user approved loan that is the name of the route so we we'll now save this then we are going to create so this place here uh, we are going to create a function called approved loan so to do that we we'll copy this we we'll now go to this controller that is the loan controller so inside the loan controller we we'll come back down here so say public function then the name of the controller then this is it and i'll put something like this that is it so this is going to return view so for it to return the view what we need to do is you remember we were able to retrieve the approved loans that is in the admin dashboard that is this particular dashboard so this is inside admin all approved loans so we can go back to there so we have the view admin loan then approved so this approved we can just copy it so we'll go back to the user you can see loan application so we can create a file we'll call it approved dot blade 
dot php then we'll now paste it inside all right so after we do this now next thing to do is here is supposed to be user dashboard all right so that is all we have to do so next is we have to go to the controller loan controller so this loan controller this is where we get all approved loan so you can just copy this exactly the way it is and the reason why i'm copying it because i know you know what i'm doing all right so we'll now paste it like this so this is loan db loan applications where status is approved but this time around our query is literally bit different from this query so this is how the query is going to be so first we have to create we have to create a variable that means email all right so let's create an email variable so email is equals to because we want to get the loan that is that belongs to that user only that user so out we can say out then we'll do this then we will now say user after user then we will now say email all right so now we get the email of the user that is logged that logged in all right so now the query it is going to change so let's remove all this so we we'll say db table loan all right so next we we'll now use where so we can say where open round bracket and close it so where email that is email inside this table email in this table here this email right all right that's the email field all right so where email so you give comma so where email is equals to this email that means this user's email all right so after we do this then next we are going to use another query which is where so where we open this then we'll say status so where status is approved all right that we have two status either approved or not approved so where status is approved then after that we will now say get offer round bracket and close it all right then we we'll put semicolon at the end so this is it that's the only thing that we need to do so we'll now save this okay so here also on the sidebar this sidebar that is for the user sidebar we already say view approved loan so now we can copy this that is the route we we'll paste it here so this is the route that we are going to use let me close this here also close this also close this this is the route here so the route that we created to use is user approved loan so copy this this is the sidebar so the sidebar here will say user approved loan this is the route we are going to use all right so that's cool that's cool so now go to file then we'll now save everything so let's go and check it out so we are going to refresh this page so you can see loan details then we we'll say view approved loan so click on this you can see we have the approved loan all right so that is very cool that is very cool so now when we click on view detail so this view detail here we don't have anything because that one is only admin that can be able to view the detail so we already know the kind of loan that we applied for so this view detail may not even be necessary so we'll go back to this this is the approved loan for the user or is user approved loan so we can just remove this action button all right and if you want to build the details so you see the process will follow to create it so it's just very easy so let's go back now we'll now refresh this 
alright this is for the user so I think I made little the changes is not effective here so let's do control Z alright so let's save this so we'll go to this is loan application this is the approved alright alright so now you can see when we click on view approved loan it's taking us to the admin section alright so what we need to do the reason why we are seeing this is that when you come back to the controller you can see here we say admin loan application approved so that is not what we are going to use we are going to use user so this should be user so we use user then loan application inside the folder loan application then we have approved so let's press control plus yes so when we do this now we we'll go back to the let's refresh this so we'll go to loan then view this yes you can see we have this user and all the information and that build details we remove it from there all right so now we have come to the end of this lecture in this lecture we are going to learn how we can change the title of the program we also include the logo so to do that we have to start with the logo first so this is the logo i downloaded a picture this is the picture so you can make use of any feature that comes your way so this is the picture we want to use as the logo all right so this picture i'll copy it from my flash drive then we'll now and put it inside the program folder so it go c we'll go to zamf and we'll go to htdocs and inside the htdocs we have loan and inside the loan we are going to we'll go to public so inside public let's paste it all right so let's paste it at here so inside the public let's just create a folder then we'll call it images so all our images are going to be here then we'll now paste this inside so logo.png is there all right so now we are going back to the code okay so let's close this so now for we to access this header this header is for user you can see it's user so for we to access this we have to we know what to do we have to just go to the uh, resources and we'll go to views we'll go to user then you can see section then we have header so this header we have image here image source that is the logo so we'll now cop uh, remove this then we we'll do this all right so we'll now say asset that is asset as i told you earlier it means the public folder so inside public folder we have folder called images so here asset we'll now put this and we'll now put images then inside images we have logo.png so let's save this so when we do this we'll now come to the user then we'll now refresh it you can see our logo is displayed successfully and after that for the title it's just very easy it is just a statement we can change the statement if we like so here we can just change it to loan manager all right so click this to save it so on doing this now we can refresh you can see we have the title loan manager so we are going to repeat this for the admin section also so the admin section here we are going to do same things so here we have to go to the we'll close this file minimize everything so we'll go to resources views admin then we have sections then we have header so in the header we repeat same things so we just move this so open two double quotes then asset then we have images the logo and we'll save it then after that here we have to also change the title so we'll call this loan manager we we'll save this so we'll come back to this place this is for the admin so let's refresh this yes we have everything intact all right so now we have come to the end of this
complete course so if you have any question you are free to drop it i'm going to respond to it all right please do not forget to leave review very nice review for this course thank you so much